Well, hello, you beautiful people. My name is Hooligan, and, well, I've survived 1,200 days in hardcore Minecraft. It's been quite the journey, honestly, and I don't plan on slowing down. I'm going to keep on going and going and going, and if we die, we're going to start a new world. Uh, but until then, we're going to keep on rocking on this one. We've done some pretty cool things. We built this castle here, um, collected a bunch of animals from froggies to, uh, to bees to camels, all kinds of stuff, pandas. I love animals. You'll, you'll learn that if you watch this. Trust me. Um, but it's been pretty fun. And uh, this is not only the evolution of me as a player. This is also the evolution of me as a content creator. Because when I started this, I had no idea what I was doing, specifically with editing. And it, it, it's, it, it takes some work. And uh, my first portions of the video are honestly going to be a little spazzy. There's still some fun things, though. But there's things I would have changed if I knew what I know now. But that's how we learn. That's how we evolve. So it is what it is, and I really hope you enjoy it. We also dug out nine chunks of the world, or at least close to it, to build this steampunk city. And we built uh, over 12 auto farms, uh, not including our regular farms or manual farms. Um, we've had some adventures with the, the Ender Dragon, with the Deep. Uh, you know, the deep dark, um, it's been quite fun. And I really, really hope uh, somebody out there enjoys this. Um, it, you know, I understand if you don't want to watch the whole thing, it's really long. But if you do, man, you're a super champ. Anyways, let's get into it. I want to tell you all a story. And this is the story of a sometimes smart but usually dumb Minecrafter. Uh, who has actually died in all the worlds I'm showing you right now. These are past worlds I did. Uh, and in this story, this journey, uh, I don't want to be pressured to do the algorithm thing. I want to uh, build my worlds the way I want, and hopefully somebody enjoys watching it. Honestly, if I get one fan out of this, I'm happy. I'm not trying to get rich here. I just want to show you guys what I like to do in this lovely, lovely game. So, if you guys are down, we're going to get to it. Uh, yeah, episode one. Let's have some fun. Thanks, guys. And girls. And unicorns. Anybody else that's in here, honestly. Anything. Yeah. What is up, my amazing people? Uh, I am Hooligan, and I'm going to try to not die in a 100-day hardcore survival world. Uh, hopefully, we get to thousands and... Tens of thousands of days, but I don't know. We're going to see what happens because I'm kind of dumb. Uh, no, seriously, like my brain's pure chaos. I have the brain of an ADHD squirrel. It, it, like, you're going to see. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. But either way, let's go off to our doom or success. Whichever happens, I don't know. We're going to see. As with every Minecraft world, we start by slapping a tree around till the tree is gone. And we're going to use that wood to make a crafting table and some splintery tools and get ready to go get some stone stuff for an upgrade. And that's exactly what we did. We uh, started gathering a bit of stone so we can make a furnace later. Um, we went ahead and started gathering some coal as, you know, made a couple stone tools and just getting ready to go get a bed and really get our journey going. Oh, stone tools in hand, we set off south looking for some sheep. It took a good half a day because they were not close. But we did find them. Oh yeah, those are the saviors. Spent a little time just harassing some sheep. Uh, we didn't want to kill them all because we wanted to bring some of them back to the base later. But we did get enough to make our bed. Bed in hand and feeling good. We went ahead and did some early game necessities, uh, getting ready to go on an adventure and getting our first night's sleep. And now we set off on our ocean journey to get as many renewable resources as we can possibly find. Uh, we're looking for everything, food, wood, you name it. And off we go. Left or right? Left or right? There's jungle over there. We already got jungle. Let's go right. We are looking for spruce and dark oak. Those are actually the two main ones. Mangrove would be amazing. Um, but I can just get property ghouls from a trader. 
Traveling about 600 blocks east, we see acacia saplings we can get right over there. But before we do that, we spend a minute getting all the coal and iron we can from this little bank. And uh, stumbling across this giant hole filled with creepers that will one-shot me. And we say, nope, 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 nope. After getting another resource, acacia saplings, we went back out on the ocean. Of course, we had to make a new bed because we're dummies and we forgot ours. But here we discover what I like to call the trifecta. You'll see here in a second. That's a boat. That's a boat. And a village. Okay. And I think I hear drowned. Yes, I do. He's right there. I do not want to fight this drowned, but I will. All for the risk of moss. And that's what we do. Uh, finding some moss, some other good stuff. Almost drowning a little bit. Fighting a drown for whatever reason. He wasn't a threat. Scoring some moss in a treasure map. This thing was stupidly close. Are, are you kidding me right now? This has been an interesting adventure already. We then head to this weird village and hoping to help them build a new civilization. Just kidding, we're going to rob them blind. And we did. We took everything we could find. Their cauldrons, their hay bales, um, all their crafting tables, anything that could benefit us. Yeah, yep, every single little bit. Hey buddy, you want to come home with me? Huh? Huh? Got a good life over there. We're going to build some cool stuff. You definitely won't be in prison forever. Come on, let's go. Now, since I am a kind and loving uh, ruler of my future kingdom, I do the humanitarian thing here. And I stick this villager in a hole. But don't you worry, he likes this hole. It, it, it's, it's home to him. He's happy. Uh, you stay safe here, bud. I'm gonna go get you a friend. Waking up on day four, we got tons of loot. Um, didn't really think I'd be this far ahead on day four, but here we are. Still missing quite a few things, though. All right, well, we have all our crops except for pumpkin, which we should be able to get right over there in the jungle. We got our moss, but we are missing a whole bunch of saplings because we're going to need different types of wood. And our first little adventure on sea had a decent haul. We made a little bit of armor. We got a bunch of leftovers. We robbed a village pretty good and uh, <clears throat> relocated a villager. It was not against his will. He was happy. He jumped right in the boat. I swear it. Since the ocean didn't quite give us everything we need, now we head south and we search for the resources we are looking for. Of course, in the spazian nature that we are used to. Oh, it's so lovely. Uh, stopping to check out a ravine that we might check out later. Uh, grabbing some melons that we're going to make stonks off of. And finding this lovely lush cave. We're going to come back for all that greenery. And continuing on to find our next resource. Snag our birch real quick. That's another one off the list. Ah, we have a peaceful little moment of gathering some birch saplings. Just uh, just taking it easy, relaxing for a minute. You know, the, the, the chill vibes, all that good stuff. Spazzing right along, we did find a ruined uh, portal that had some gold blocks and a, a golden apple. Nothing too crazy, I left it out. And there's the glorious dark oak. Oh yeah. So we took ourselves a few minutes uh, gathering some dark oak and as many saplings as we could get. Now we wanted enough to grow at least two because dark oak often doesn't drop its saplings. It's kind of annoying and yeah, I didn't want that to happen when we got back home. We're going to want to get some of this uh, mushroom for potions later. Oh, and we got spruce on the mountain. 
with another very important resource down in our toolbox filling up we're starting to feel the uh, less of the need to speed through everything more like we can relax a little bit and kind of plan for the future and that's exactly what we did uh, taking it a little easy enjoying the scenery just collecting resources as we go and just enjoying the beauty oh good job Minecraft I mean come on look at this And just like that, the beauty tries to kill us. Uh, seems fitting. If you guys didn't know, it is possible to fall straight through the snow into a giant cavern or ravine and die. And that is our cue to get out of here. I am not dying to snow. Okay, good reason to get out of here even more. And taking a few minutes to gather up some cherry saplings as well as some of the petals, we go ahead and progress to almost getting killed by this skeleton because we are super duper good at this game. No shield, no armor, barely any food. We're super smart. At this point, we decide it might be best to head towards home. All right, well, we're feeling a little safer. We got some armor, we got some food. We've had a pretty productive uh, couple days. We have uh, spruce saplings. We have birch, we have dark oak, uh, yeah, and we found cherry. Um, we did not find any mangrove, which is a big, big bummer, because I wanted to use it for my starter build. And I'm not thinking from the biomes I'm seeing that I'm going to find any mangrove on this trip, so we might have to travel quite far. Anyways, uh, I think we're just going to wrap it around north and uh, head on home and get to probably mining, because I'm feeling undergeared. I'm using stone axes over here. I mean, come on. Let's go. 600 blocks later, while traveling towards home, we come across another village. Hoping for hay bales, we end up finding something much better. We have a side mission. We need those kitties. We source a bunch of salmon from that local river. And these kitties really, really wanted to be my friend. They just didn't quite know it yet. And they were incredibly stubborn. This took forever, I believe about a half a day, to get these little kitty cats. And his partner in crime here wasn't much better. He was also stubborn, ran into a hole. Operation Kitty Cat was a success. Kitty cats in tow and just a few hundred blocks from home, we discover something wonderful. I love me some pandas. And I'll fight anybody who says otherwise. Uh, I'm going to call this guy Captain Snugglepants and this guy Barnaby. And you guys are going to be coming home. Yeah, you're going to be coming home with me. Not quite yet. Really soon. I'm making a nice little play area. It's going to be wonderful. Back home safely with our kitty cats on day 10. Our loot is stashed and we took a minute to gather some of the local livestock for food and resources. And it's about time we start gathering everything we need to transform this peninsula into something beautiful. Uh, there's going to be a dock, I believe, probably a lighthouse with a farm in it over there. And we're just going to keep building and building and building until we have a kingdom. But we need resources for that, which means stone and mining. All right, my dudes, we are on day 10 and we need to get our sugar cane and our cow set up because I'm trying to enchant some stuff. I ain't got nothing shiny. It's it's dumb. Uh, when we went when we went and uh, kidnapped, um, helped that villager over that way, we saw some cows. We're gonna bring them back here, and also I'm gonna show you an island that I found that I think is gonna make an amazing quarry, and that's where we're gonna start our mine shaft here shortly. And this is the island I was telling you about. I want to demolish this entire thing and make an excavation site. Of course, today we're just going to be uh, doing some mining. It's going to be really cool when I'm done. Trust me. I'm trying to get these materials to build the starter bears. Before we head mining, we want to get our cow friends home. And they are slow. Them and sheep are, for whatever reason, for me, a pain to lead home. 
uh, cow or uh, sorry, pigs and chickens, they just seem to want to run at you. You can sprint and they'll just follow you. But you just these guys always just get left behind. It's it's really annoying, but it is what it is. And we need their meats and their leathers. With cows in hand back at home and making a few torches, we start our hole. Um, we're eventually going to dig out this entire area, but for right now we're going brrrr because we need diamonds. And we stumble across something pretty cool. There are skeletons and spiders around here. Okay, there's a skeleton spawner, but I still hear spiders. I am not trying to go out this early. It is slightly embarrassing how many times I almost just died there. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't get hit at all. Not at all. I was never scared. We'll come back to that skelly spawner later, but right now we're trying to multitask. We want all these cool dark blocks that we're going to be doing a lot of building with. As well as trying to find some diamonds and, yeah, and all the other resources we can possibly find down here. Oh, yeah. It's going to be one, isn't it? Okay, okay. Two's better than one. Oh, okay. And you might be thinking we're down here for diamonds. Diamonds are a bonus. What we're actually down here is for this. This is the tough block, and it is so good. It's just a lovely block. I mean, I was kind of lying. I am down here for diamonds, too, but this block is really good. And chugging right along, we are looking for just enough diamonds that we can make a, uh, a chanter and preferably another pickaxe. And we do. Which is absolutely lovely, because at, at, at this point I was getting bored. And we are out of here. It's time to go get some enchants going and actually build our starter base. I think. I might get distracted again. You just never know. It's just how I roll. After we get out of our cave with our fresh diamond pickaxe, uh, the village wasn't all that far away from us, so we decided to stop and get some obsidian to make an enchanter and uh, another portal, since we were already around. Oh no, this villager randomly jumped in my boat. I don't think of anything I can do. I I guess I have to take him home. Eh, come on, buddy. With an inventory completely packed, we admit this villager to our penthouse suite, also known as the hole, before we go stash all these good, good blocks. Well, peoples, we're going to take a couple days here and uh, start terraforming this land, or at least get it prepped for it. Why this slow sugarcane uh, tries to grow, oh my gosh, it takes forever. So we're going to be growing some trees, chopping some trees, and other random crap.
All right, now after that time lapse, uh, things are starting to come together. The shape's looking good, but the color is ugly. Yeah, we're going to need to get a bunch of moss, uh, some other cool blocks, but the shape's going to look really good. I think we're probably going to put a lighthouse right here with something special in it. And I'm thinking an overhanging starter house right here, almost like a harbor master. But to do that, I am going to go on a montage of gathering lots and lots of blocks. With the sugar cane and leather we got from our time lapse, we got a full enchanter set up. But we do not have enough leathers to make anything shiny and sparkly. So, yeah, we need a farm. So, we need this mossy anyways, and the rest of this material. Hopefully we find some lapis as well. Um, might as well just build this spawner and gather the materials at the same time. And that's exactly what we did. I didn't show this building because it would have took forever and I didn't want like eight minutes of my video to be building a skeleton farm. But if anybody is interested, I can post a video of how to do it, but I'm pretty sure most people know how. But anyways, with the farm built, we are on our way to getting lots and lots of levels and bones and all that rest of that good stuff. Free bows, arrows. So we did, and we sat here and we ground some levels, got a pretty decent bow. That is not bad. That's a good starter bow. And hitting level 30, we're feeling good, ready to go do an enchant. And we said we're out of here. Okay, here we go. That is not bad. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining at all. I will take it. With our Fortune 2 in hand, we set off to get as many diamonds as we can, but we need a lot more than diamonds. We need pretty much everything, trying to get in the big boy leagues. And we get redstone. Pretty much looking for anything we could find. Um, find a few more diamonds, getting closer to that full diamond gear. A bit of lapis, we need that for enchanting and dyes. And more diamonds. We are getting really close to full diamond armor. And that's it. That's full diamond armor. Uh, we're going to go until this pickaxe is almost dead, or these torches run out, but we're looking pretty. And that's what we did. Uh, we went until this thing was almost completely dead. However, it all worked out pretty well. As you can see here, we have tons of building materials. We are going to be using a whole lot of deep slate. We had a carrot in our inventory, so on the way home with our lots and lots of loot, we lured these pigs. Also, can anybody explain to me why these pigs do not drop leather when they die? Like, they literally, they, they produce leather. They're, they, they have hides. They should, they should drop leather. Are we ready for this? Pants. And there's the full set. All that drip. Oh, yeah. And we're going to put this iron armor somewhere special so we can display it later. You know, it, it served us good. We're on day 30. That's right, 30 days. And uh, we're still alive. Doing pretty good, actually. And now it's on to the next phase. Now that we got our diamond armor... Um, a good amount of resources. Uh, we're starting to breed an army of kitties to get lots and lots of gunpowder. And we are shaping our docks. Now, I'm going to build a starter house. Uh, I'm going to try to do it in this episode. But what I want to do before that is get a tower. Maybe a lighthouse type of situation going on right here. And at the top of that, Iron Golem Farm. Because that will give us the iron we need to make hoppers for farms and farms and, you know, more farms. And that's what I want to do, because there's only certain things in this game I really like to do manually. And things like sugarcane and, uh, you know, melons. I, I'm not doing it by myself. No, it, 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 just, just do it. I don't want to do it. We'll take a second here to upgrade our arsenal. Uh, we want an axe for sure. Shovel. Um... Another pickaxe.
And I think we're going to do a sword and a hoe. What kind of a chance can we get on these? Nope. Quite possibly. No. Maybe. I think we'll do... We're going to do the act. When we want silk touch, please silk touch. That's absolutely perfect. Like, this world is insane. We've had some really good luck. And our next enchant on our pickaxe when we hit level 30 is silk touch. Oh my gosh. Are we, the, are we just this pro gamer? Is, is, this, is this how this is working? Setting up a temporary villager housing so we can get our iron uh, golem farm a cracking. We made a big dumb dumb mistake. I accidentally put the slabs of this temporary housing too close to the bed. So they did not register. Which means every time I gave them food they would just eat it and not give me babies. This went on for several several days. Like much wasted time. And doing a little hopscotch with these absolutely stupid villagers. Oh my gosh, they're idiots. We do get them in their ugly brown house, uh, unaware of the horrific troubles that are up to come. Oh, it's funny looking back on them. Well, I guess while we're waiting for those stupid villagers to make babies and uh, our wheat to grow, let's get our farm set up at least. Right now we are just worried about the farm portion of this build. But don't you worry, it's going to look super, super cool later. I promise you this. Just to be sure. I swear if they don't make a baby, I'm going to lose it. I don't understand. They have four beds. Come on. I, I, I don't get it. Is, can they not access the beds? Seriously, that's what it was. Well, I warned you guys at the beginning of this. I am a super duper awesome, kind of okay Minecrafter. Well, hello there. Are you having villager problems? Are your villagers randomly jumping off cliffs or dying on cactuses? Will they not breed because they can't get in their bed? Well, consider hooligan for president. No, seriously, do not uh, vote Hooligan for president. He will not help you at all and is barely smarter than a villager. So, I think the play here is probably start moving these guys across the bridge now. And uh, hopefully another baby pops up. And then we'll have all three. And once they grow up, we can set up our iron farm. After wasting uh, 19 hay bales worth of wheat, uh, these villagers finally decided to cooperate. Uh, also wasting like four or five days of my game. Um, but it's done. It, it, oh, villagers. Oh, they're so stupid. Just, just stupid. We spend the rest of the day working on our banks, making it a little prettier. Uh, while we wait for nightfall, we're going to try to throw a zombie uh, item and see if he picks it up. Hey buddy, can you pick up an item? He can, nice. So then we lure our zombie into his forever home. Well, he'll be going rawr and scaring uh, villagers for uh, the rest of his life. Uh, he's going to be really happy doing it. He applied for the job. Uh, he was our prime candidate, honestly. Now, if you guys don't know this, you can trick pretty much any mob to walking over a trap door as long as it's open. They're dumb and they think it's a solid block. Look at that, already working.
All right, so we got our basic shape down. Um, lacking color. Go on a quest for diorite, uh, calcite, two other blocks, uh, some white concrete powder, and we're going to make this look really pretty because I like the shape, and we still need to put the top on at the actual lighthouse part, but it's just too dark. We need to lighten it up. So I'm going to go on another montage, and we're going to come back and finish this. Spending a bit of time running through our cave systems we found while digging our mine shaft, uh, we did not find any geodes. Uh, we did find a good deposit of diorite. So, of course, we went brrrr, getting as much as we can. Uh, but I think at this point, we're probably going to have to go out into the ocean looking for a geode, which is going to be annoying. But first, we have one little pit stop. So, we were already in our cave system, and you know we have our spawner here. So, we figured let's get some levels, because we need more enchants. Taking a bit of time, uh, I think it was actually a day or so, just uh, slapping skeletons around, all that good stuff, until we hit level 33. That's two chances. So we did find ourselves a geode uh, in one of the most annoying spots I could possibly think of. Ended up making a bunch of doors and exploring an underwater ravine, and uh, we're not going to get much of the uh, palace basalt, but we can get our calcite. And we did make that silk touch pick, so we're going to get some of these buds. So taking about a day roaming the local rivers, collecting a bit of clay in case we want to use brick, we decided to go ahead and check our enchantments. Ooh, respiration or feather falling on either one of these would be really good. Um, what about our sword? Nope. We're risking it. Uh, it's, it's, it's okay. No, 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 no. Oh, well, we can always get more levels. Let's see. You know what? It's hardcore blast protection, not getting one shot by a creeper. Not the worst. All right, we're here at day 60, and whoever's uh, stuck it out this far, you'll see that the peninsula is starting to transform. We still got some stonework to do, because um, we're not going to just use base stone. I just don't have the resources yet to do it. Uh, but you can kind of start seeing the shape that we're going for. Uh, kind of like a little harbor area, a little cove over there, and of course our lighthouse. But we are missing some components for this lighthouse. And for that, I am going to have to go to the super scary nether. And I'm not going to lie to you, I'm a little scared. Legit, like, I'm scared. This could be where it ends. Um, I might even say we gonna die. It's a good possibility. But we're gonna do it anyways. Now, my idea here, so I'm gonna want a harbor master's house here overhanging this, uh, this dock. Or maybe a farmhouse. I don't really know, but I know something's gonna be there. So what I am thinking, I want the uh, nether portal to be accessible from the dock and since we have to fill this in anyways i'm thinking we put it here and we do like a little cave and we can also include our nether wart farm in there and everything anyways i'm gonna gather some resources and let's go to the nether and get killed that sounds fun doing a bunch of random necessities that we needed to do before we went to the nether like making a new pickaxe which sucked i just had to combine it with another one and didn't get any benefit from it I really do hope you guys are enjoying this story I'm trying to tell you. I've been having a lot of fun with it. 
but we do go ahead and get everything done. Uh, we do need to go get some levels at the Skelly Farm. We built our portal and fought off some evil invaders. We are here on day 64 of our hardcore world, and uh, somehow we're still alive. Not sure how. Um, we have our nether portal set up over there, uh, ready to get lit and walk through and probably die right away. But we're going to do that in a little bit. Right now we have a problem with this guy. For some reason, he keeps spawning inside of blocks right in that corner. Don't know why. Pretty sure it's just a bug. But I did go back and look at my other worlds, because I built this farm many times. I never really had this problem, and I've always built it a little bit different uh, each time I build it, but I think I have a solution. So we're going to fix that real fast, and then we're going to go gather some resources to go to the nether, and uh, try to finish our goals uh, to get to where we want to be on day 100. So we do go ahead and get it fixed. Uh, adding the walls in the back does prevent the golems from spawning in the walls, and we made a mistake with these barrels. It was ugly. Um, but while we were up here, we decided just to go ahead and make things pretty so we don't have to climb back up here and do it later. And I thought it turned out pretty good. And I had one last thing to do before heading into the scary nether. Alright, we're back at our base, or at least what's going to be our base soon. Uh, and we're going to make a new shovel and see if we can't get a decent enchantment on it. Because, like I said, terraform and not enchanted shovel equals sucks. Here we go. I did. Yeah, okay. Silk touch would have been nice, but it, it's fine. It'll work. All right, here we go. That bed out of the hot bar. We do not want that. And that amazing spawn we were looking for, uh, we got the opposite of it. This sucks. So naturally I went to a building what I like to call the scaredy cat cocoon. Just to make myself feel a little bit better. Because I don't want to fall in the lava or get hit by a gas. Alright, um... Well, east is a no-go, but it's all lava lake. Uh, that's not too promising. Um, that maybe? I think our best bet is west. At least it goes into something we can dig into. So then we get the digging and traversing this really stupid biome. Oh my gosh, it, it, it's, it's a nightmare to go across. But we do end up going over to the nether waste eventually. Pro gaming on a uh, on a gas. Okay, we have crimson and we have warped wood. I do not see any soul sand. And getting a uh, quartz because we need lots of it for observers, and more quartz. And then we start making mistakes, really bad mistakes. Almost got us killed. This guy was very ouchy. Well, we almost just died to a piglin, but we did get ourselves a bit of quartz. Um, and a bit of gold, which is why he got mad at us. Now, I'm not really trying to die in here today. Uh, I would really avoid it. I want these trees, but I don't want to farm them here. So what I want to do is get some of the nylium blocks and uh, some mushrooms, and we can grow these back home. So super speedy, we get all the blocks we need to grow all this back home. We've got a couple farms we're going to be using for this. Uh, actually put some tutorials up, uh, or at least I will be putting them up, if anybody's interested. Alright, mission accomplished. Those guys down there looking to cause trouble. Uh, before we leave, we're just going to go up there and take a look around, see if there's any other resources we can bring back. You know, I want to get some of those uh, glowstone. Maybe we'll see a little bit of uh, soul sand. If not, we are out of here. Fun fact, in my last world, a piglin is what killed me. I was going through a portal in one of my basements, and he followed me in, and I had no way to get out. I had an enchanted sword. 
Personally, I think he was hacking. Dude had aimbot. And getting attacked by another ghast, but we are just too good for this ghast. Uh, we do decide it's probably time to get up. So that's what we do. We are out. And we are not dead yet. And of course we arrive back in the middle of the night. I also think we solved our golem problem. All right, well, it looks like it's time for a montage. We have to terraform this whole land, move all this crap, sort these somewhere, which also means we have to figure out where we're going to put a storage building. Um, Yeah, that actually might be the building we put right there. Just a basic one for right now. And we can... I'll make it look pretty. That way we can convert it over to something else later, like put some villagers in it or something. Well, enjoy it or don't. Whatever. So we were in the middle of a mining montage. Uh, part of it didn't record. Uh, I don't know what happened, but we came out okay. We got a little bit of diamonds, uh, some deep slate, which unfortunately is normal deep slate, but it's only pickaxe ahead of the time. But more importantly, that guy right there, he has propagules and he wants five emeralds for him. So we are going on a side mission over to the village over there. We're going to find something to trade and we're getting those propagules. I love me some mangrove wood. Once again, your boy is Big Dum Dum. I forgot I have a villager right there. Didn't need to go the thousand blocks that way. So I made myself a little fletching table. Oh, we're gonna trade this dude some sticks and get us some mangrove. Aw, oh, yeah. Buddy, I'm so happy about this that I'm not even gonna murder you and take your leads. Instead, I'll just steal your lead. Now, we are starting to get really, really close to day 100. Uh, so I did take a little time off camera just farming trees, uh, I think about three or four days worth. Uh, you can see the leaves decaying over there. Uh, but for our next and probably final build of the episode, we need brown mushroom blocks uh, to go with some mud and mud brick. Uh, now, right over there, uh, about 400 blocks off the coast of the village we've been frequenting, uh, there is a mushroom island, uh, and that is where we're going to go and steal those mushroom blocks and get to cracking on these last, uh, ten-ish days. And let me just say that this tiny mushroom island is absolutely adorable. Like, oh my gosh, this, this is the entire thing. There's nothing else. This, this is it. I might have to come back here and, like, build a village, just a tiny little mushroom village. I don't know, but this is too precious to, to not do something with. But I did steal all their mushrooms. And on the way back home, ADHD Law forced me to stop and play with these turtles. 
And we found a little turtle. Does he have a friend? Oh, yeah. Well, I need to steal some of your sand, buddy, but I'm going to come back and uh, see if you guys can make me some baby eggs. Yeah, and bring you home, make a little area for you. A little pond. Yeah, good times. But right now, we uh, made a little pit stop over by the village just to get a little sand so we can uh, get some water bottles and make some mud. And arriving back home, I already missed my turtles. I will be back for those guys. Uh, now our iron golem farm here, I think we got her fixed. I don't see any golems on the bank or anywhere around. But we're going to go check it out. Also, look how amazing that tower is as our beacon of home. And that's why our iron farm is a kraken. Yeah, that little issue we had on, what was it, like day 20, 30, something like that with them falling out. I think we have fixed it. And that equals lots and lots of loot. Hoppers forever. Now, at this point, we are really starting to feel the pressure. Uh, day 100 is coming really, really close. So we focus our stupid brains into working as efficiently as possible. We got ourselves some wheat, some mud, and we went ahead and put this topper on the lighthouse. And I actually love this, especially when you look at it from the ocean. It's pretty amazing, especially at nighttime. I dig it. I dig it. And looking at the nighttime, uh, it might have to be working through the night here soon to meet our quota, but our tower is looking good. And we have nine days left. So, bit of a change of plans. I don't want my starter house to go here. I have some other ideas that'll be much cooler. Although I do have an idea of what I do want to go here. So we get to cracking on this sugarcane farm. Uh, actually, one of my favorite farms to build. Uh, I might even do a tutorial on it, if one's not already posted up already. And just bear warning, uh, depressing, sad times are a coming. You shall see in a few seconds. Well, it is a sad day, my friends. Uh, replay my completely spazzed out on my second half of my uh, time lapse I was going to do. I tried to do the footage in first person, and it was just too spazzy. If anybody does want to see it, I can post it in like a bloopers section or something like that. Alright, so working through the night, obviously. Uh, that's what we had to do. We're on day 98, and we are out of time. Uh, I think I'm going to come back here later and probably put a water pipe going in there, uh, do the interior. Probably a pond, like the water pipes feeding from the pond. And just a little fake uh, chimney on the other side, because like it's an industrial farm. There'll be some, uh, uh, what do you call it, some byproduct. Uh, but yeah, but while we've been building this, what have we got? Okay, over over a stack of sugarcane just while building this thing. Um, that's pretty good, honestly. All right, we have one last adventure to do. We are getting ourselves a brush and going looking for some sniffers. All right, we have our brush, and we're going to go head off to that uh, ocean ruin that we have passed many, 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 many times, uh, going back from the village and um, to our little mine that we're going to eventually turn into a uh, quarry. We end up getting some good stuff and some bad stuff. This one was not good. Neither was this one. This one here, that's pretty good. Called Assured. I don't know why. Dumb name. But then we score. That's what we're looking for. That was dumb, it rhymed. And a little more junk. I mean, what's one emerald? And then the last thing we were looking for. These are the really only two things that we were looking for. We just wanted two eggs, and we got them. So we got two sniffer eggs, a couple fishing rods that aren't great, honestly, uh, and a buried treasure map. Uh, and we still have the rest of this day. Uh, we're going to spin it and go check out this treasure. And that's a glitch. That is not an actual treasure map. Change of plans. Let's go make a little pin for these sniffers.
Now later on, we'll make a cool place for these guys to live, but right now we just wanted a collection system, something that'll auto collect the things they dig up for us. And so that's what we did, and yep, they're gonna live there for a while. With our sniffer eggs acquired and uh, being on the last day before 100, we decided to utilize every second we can. Just doing little details uh, in the time we have left just to make things look a little prettier. Um, we still have tons and tons to do, but I think this helps a lot. All right, now that is day 100. Uh, I feel like we got a lot done. Uh, we got an iron farm set up. Uh, looks pretty cool, I think. Um, we started our little uh, dock down there. Uh, we built ourselves a nice little sugarcane farm. It still needs a little bit of details, but it's looking pretty cool. Um, what else did we do? Oh, yeah, we uh, we went to the nether. We got ourselves some diamonds. Um, dug down to bedrock and uh, started working on our little quarry, but let's be real. We're going to do a creeper farm next, uh, next episode, and we're going to blow the crap out of that thing. We're not doing that by hand. Um, yeah. Oh, and let's not forget our sniffers that are growing up over there. I don't think they're grown yet, though. Oh, no, they are moving. They're just not adults. Nice. And we also acquired all our foods. Uh, pretty much every animal we can eat. Um, all the crops that we can eat. And a couple villagers. We, uh, <coughs> rescued them, um, from their horrible life of freedom. And, uh... I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, this next episode should be a lot more buildy and adventure Because you know early game Minecraft. I love it because it's so peaceful. But it, it's a grind. It's definitely a grind. Because you need all this stuff to really move forward in the game. But once you have it, it's just let's go, you know, full force or whatever you want to do. Um, I think next uh, episode I'm going to work on trying to get all my gear enchanted as well. And uh, I got lots of big ideas. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really do. Um, and even if you didn't enjoy it, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. I've had a lot of fun making this. And I hope to make more. Even if people don't watch it, I'm probably still going to make it because I'm having fun. But if you guys want to join me, well, I would love that. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Welcome back to chapter two of our story. Our first uh, 100 days went really well. Had a lot of fun, got a lot of cool stuff uh, accomplished. It was, a, it was a good time. By the end of this one, uh, I really want this place to be absolutely beautiful. Something I'm really, really proud of to, to come home to after a long journey. And it's going to be a grind, but we're going to get after it. Welcome back, you beautiful people. Um, we have big plans for this episode. Uh, we are out of the early, early stages of the game, which means we have more freedom to do cool stuff um, instead of the necessities we have to. Now, if you remember the mine shaft we started digging in the first episode, we want to build a quarry. Now, I don't know if we'll get the quarry done today, but we need wood, so we are going to do a time lapse of taking off the entire top of said quarry. Just getting it ready to go. All right, seven days later, uh, you might be wondering, uh, hooligan dude, uh, you're kind of an idiot. You only have 100 days to make this episode. Why are you wasting seven on it uh, clearing an island? Well, I think I was pretty smart with it. Uh, not only did we clear the island and get it ready to build the quarry on, we got all these resources, uh, tons of it. Um, and we're also going to collect some dirt before we head home. Uh, this is going to get us really, really going on our journey. Um, but... Now, it's time to take all this crap back home. Let's go. So, since we wanted to make a new shovel for our next adventure anyways, we decided to go ahead and just uh, dig this thing out until it was completely broke. Or about to be. And with our chest boat packed to the tippy top, we head back home. Let's just take a moment to appreciate uh, our little welcoming home image here. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I love it. 
taking a moment to stash all our hard-earned resources. Oh, yes, we got lots and lots of good stuff. But even though it seems like a lot, it's only going to go so far. We might need to set up a farm or something. All right, with the double chest full of resources uh, back home, uh, we had to make a chest poke to get it all back, but whatever. That's kind of cool anyways. Um, we want to go on an adventure. I want to fight some stuff. I want to get lots of greenery. And to do that, there was an azalea tree over by our island that we're demolishing to make the quarry. And I really want rooted dirt because that's part of the way I make my paths right now. That's just coarse dirt and it's ugly by itself. So um, I'm going to go try to not die and have a little fun and, you know, hit some things in the face. Maybe shoot them and get a bunch of greenery and other cool stuff to make this place look pretty. But first, we do uh, need to make a new shovel, because I broke did this thing. I think I'm going to have to come back here and check out this view once our quarry's done. That might look pretty. Now, I struggled pretty good here to figure out how to show you guys this part of the journey. Because uh, my dudes, my peoples... um. I tried top down, it was obscured. I tried uh, first person and it made my eyeballs bleed. So this is the best thing I could come up with, uh, using replay to, to, to show it. All right, so making it into the cave, our uh, inventory is already looking rough, like really rough. Uh, we're gonna have to pick the best things and leave everything else behind. Uh, but we do take a second here to set us up a little uh, safety net because I don't know when we get creeped up on, literally. We can hate creepers, stupid. But yeah, we uh, get ourselves some glow berries because uh, we use those a lot in decoration, honestly. It's one of my favorite lighting. And we just kind of stun on this uh, zombie here. He, he thinks he's tough. He ain't nothing. And then the cooler thing, we find some little friends and we say, oh yes, we have to bring these guys home. Not just one, two. So inventory space or not, we need both of them. So we go ahead and do that. And we go ahead and get ourselves a little bit of drip leaf too. All right, so this cave is a bust. Like, it sucks. Yeah, it was not the only half of the stuff I was looking for. Not even that, I don't think. So we did have to venture out. Uh, found a cavern, just trying to find a new portion of the lush cave. Without much luck, I'm just going to be honest. Uh, we did find something we thought was going to be uh, promising. Guess what? It was not. If anything, it was taunting. You'll see here in a second. Oh, look, a geode. That would have been nice to have left last episode. Freaking Minecraft. Eh, battle a couple skeletons. No big deal there. And we do finally find something uh, worthwhile. Not only do we find all that dripstone, but the game taunts us again with a second geode. Just telling us, haha, you wish you had this, didn't you? So, we decide we're going to get all that dripstone. Well, at least as much as we can carry and what we can sacrifice. So, we head up this waterfall and uh, see what's up here. But with inventory space looking rough, um, I think we're going to get rid of a little bit of the stuff we kind of wanted. Um, and just get the renewable resources. Yeah, I think that's what we need to do for right now. And, of course, a diamond when we see it. All right, now. Now, there is a little bit of promise to this, because um, right over, you'll see here in a second, there is more Lush Cave. And we get ourselves a little brawl.
All right, so fighting off our last mobs here. Uh, that barrage went on for a while. I didn't count or nothing, but I think I fought like 25 things, 30? I don't know, but we finally found something we actually wanted. Those pretty, pretty pink things up there. The spore blossom is also just an amazing block. Oh, the particles are beautiful. I'm going to make some custom trees with it. And I think at this point, I want to dig up there and see if there's more lush cave and then probably get out of here. Now, this next little part legit scared the crap out of me. Uh, yeah, like, it, bad. Like, literally, for the next two minutes, I'm constantly paranoid that, like, vines are creepers. There, there were so many in this cave. But in the end, I guess that uh, blast protection we got earlier paid off. All right, so we did okay on our first uh, little adventure. Uh, tons of rooted dirt. Oh my gosh, that thing went on forever. Um, got some dripstone, uh, some pointed dripstone, a couple diamonds randomly. Um, a couple spore blossoms. I want much more of these. And a couple big drip leaves, as well as some goldberries. Uh, I'm sad that I didn't find any small drip leaves, but honestly, I needed to go home first anyways, because I was out of inventory space. I really didn't want to get rid of much. Um, but yeah, this part of the dripstone, uh, I'm sorry, uh, lush cave just was not very promising. So I think we're going to have to go into that exposed section we found on day one, um, when we went off searching for wood. Stopping back home to unload. And we did get two oxalotls, um, so let's just throw them in this pond. Could have swore I got two different ones, but apparently not. We decide to try our adventuring luck one more time and see what happens. This one looked a lot more promising. With our little escape route set up, we head into the cave, taking note of that slimy boy over there that's going to make an awesome farm later. With a stacked inventory, we take ourselves back home to put all this good, good stuff away. Taking a look at everything we gathered from that second adventure, um, we did pretty good. We got two more oxalotls, we got tons of clay balls to make brick, um, we got these small drip leaves. Oh, I wish you could grow these, because they're so pretty, but we try to grow them, they just become these big drip leaves, which, they're okay. And these spore blossoms, uh, the ceilings were very high, we did not get many of these. 
once again, why can't we grow these? They're so pretty, and they're so far and few in between. Uh, come on, come on. Renewable resources, guys. Come on. So, I forgot to record the whole last day. Yep, just started doing stuff, made a couple speeches, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, to recap you, we lost one day to a thunderstorm. Um, we're starting to breed some villagers up there, because we need to start trading for emeralds and get our levels to make uh, our stuff shiny. Um, we have a plan of what we want to do with our uh, nether portal down there to make it look cool. But right now, we're just uh, grinding a few resources uh, so we can get that done. Alright, so it's nighttime, and once we get our creeper farm set up, which I'm thinking about putting over there on the... Make like a little island thing. Um, we're going to be losing some days, and as you guys probably know by now, I want to end this episode on day 200. 200-ish. Close to it. Uh, so to make up that, we are going to do some work in the nether uh, that we have to do anyways, and that way we don't sleep through the night and waste days. Alright, so I need a bunch of blackstone and basalts. Uh, and I think I can multitask this, or at least try to. I'm going to dig up, um, and then I am going to clear out a large area. And we're going to use that material to build with, but we're also going to set up a uh, frog light farm. And a magma cream farm, whichever we're going for at the time. Um, and it's just going to be right over there, probably about 30 blocks that way and about 10 blocks up. And so we get on our grind. In the nighttime, we're uh, digging out this cavern here for our future farm. And in the deep daytime, we're uh, breeding villagers and chopping trees. Now, this farm I'm going to be building here is pretty cool. I don't remember where I learned to build it, but it produces ridiculous amounts of uh, frog lights. It's awesome. We'll probably be getting this here done soon, actually. So, working through the uh, day on the overworld and night in the uh, nether has it's gotten us back on track time-wise. But we are going to have to skip this night because I want to work on getting these villagers set up. Now, I'm going to want to set up a villager breeder. I don't want to do that just yet. Hey, buddy. I don't want to do that just yet. What do you got? Ooh, I want those mini barrels. And the smithing table. Okay, quick side mission. I need two emeralds, uh, a barrel, and a smithing table. Where did he go? Ah, come on. Where did he go? Aha. I love these mini blocks. They just add so much cool stuff to the game. Okay, now back to what I was saying. Uh, ugly brown house needs to go. Uh, now, eventually these villagers are all going to be uh, put where they're supposed to be. Like, the fishermen will probably be down uh, selling fish off the docks with a cool little uh, like hut. Uh, librarians are going to be going in a grand library, library of course. Uh, you know, farmers, you know, you get the point. But for right now, they're just going in another hole. But I want it to look a little nicer, so we're going to dig down here a little bit, make them a little storage area uh, for the time being, and uh, get this money and experience train rolling. Welcome to The Hole 2, the sequel. Uh, we start getting these stalls set up for these villagers, and for once, they actually cooperated. I know, villagers cooperated. It's impossible, right? Um, we actually ended up getting some good trades off these guys. Honestly, it's it's they're pretty legit. Uh, but yeah, we start getting the base structure uh, kind of just laid out. Now, now that we got these guys unlocked to iron, and an infinite supply of iron, we are going to be making a lot of money. Um, they'll just have to do for now until... Uh, we get some uh, blaze rods and whatnot from the nether. 
Uh, then we're going to be curing the farmers and growing lots of pumpkins and melons, which will keep us infinite in levels and riches. But for now, these guys will do. And these masons hooked us up pretty good, gave us dripstone and granite, both wins. And oh yeah, <laughs> just like that, we're almost back to level 33. We can do a couple enchants. Uh, 100% worth the uh, couple days we took doing this. Uh, we're going to take a second here and make it look presentable. Um, we can always repurpose this structure later too if we don't want to keep these guys here. And I'm going to be honest, I don't want to keep them here forever. But they are a temporary solution. So our first villager doesn't quite pan out the way we want him to. But we do end up settling on something that we really, really do need. Oh, I think we might have to take that, honestly. Let's see if his buddy does better. That's a little expensive, but once he's cured, it won't be a big deal, and we'll be rolling an emerald soon anyway, so we're doing it. We are going to throw a feather falling on our boots just in case we take a fall. So we had a whole lot of stuff to do all at once. We want to build that uh, village breeder back there. We want to uh, repair our tools with Mindy. And we want to get rid of this ugly brown house. We want to sort our chest monster. And we do it all. Uh, this design here, as we build this little breeder, was originally a design by Impulse SV. Uh, then it broke, and then someone fixed it again, and then it broke again, and now it works. I don't know. All I know is it's awesome. And these villagers cooperate pretty good. Um, I was a little sad about putting them in a hole forever, but I asked them, like, dude, you sure you want to go in here? And they're like, Hur. I'm like, all right, bro, it's your call, dude. Have fun. And I originally put the little uh, uh, area to throw them bread in the wrong spot, and it just kept falling through. We We did fix that, though. And Ugly Brown House is gone. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to put up here, but a lot of options. I'm kind of liking this. Hey, it works. Nice. All right. Now, how do we want to deliver these guys? It might be as simple as a boat and a bed. Come on, buddy. Go jump on the bed. Oh, this is going to work really, really good. And with so many chores done, our chests out of the way, we have to find a place for this enchanter. We finally have breathing room to build. But what are we going to do? Taking a second to level up our villagers, we got some pretty decent stuff. Uh, one of these dudes had, uh, I think, efficiency four? And Aqua Affinity, and one of them had Curse of Vanishing, which is useless to us. But yeah, we just went ahead and did this before we really got on our grind. Uh, there's some really cool projects that are about to be happening really fast. Uh, not these ones, uh, it's coming up here real soon. But we do need the materials, so we go ahead and just rock out the quick grind, getting uh, as much wood as we can. And then we decide to go mining, because we have no deep slate, and we need a lot of it. So we burr all this out, uh, getting a few diamonds along the way. I think we end up getting like uh, 14. Which isn't bad, considering we only came down here for Deep Slate. And of course, right back to the wood chopping. But don't worry, this is not all we're doing. Hey Hooligan, I bet you're not crazy enough to build a creeper farm and something custom on top of it before you even have a starter house or a place to put your bed. Well, the answer to that is, you're wrong. Myself, because I'm talking to myself like a weirdo.
we'll come back to our creeper farm and do the bottom once we have respiration, but man, we had fun doing it, so we decided to keep building for a little bit. We still have some more adventuring to do before this uh, this chapter's over, but we wanted to work on our little uh, nether portal area, and uh, I just kind of do everything on the fly, and sometimes it works, sometimes I change it, sometimes it just sucks all together. But this one, I digged it. I digged it. Yeah, that's right. Englishes with the words. Uh, I was really happy. And, of course, we just keep going. Um, we always knew we wanted a pond here, but I didn't really know how I wanted to do it. I ended up just kind of just, just, just trying some things out. I definitely knew I wanted a pipe right there with water flowing through it. And uh, we're still lacking some components to put in there to make it really look pretty, but it's coming along. And you know that I'm going to add some paths and another field. Why? Because I like paths and fields. And uh, eventually it's going to frame something out. You guys will see. You'll see. It, it'll happen. I promise. And I do like building custom trees. Uh, this one we do here in a second. It's not my best, but I did have fun with it. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of birch uh, by itself, but when it's stripped... It's it's decent, and of course, the most important thing, we wanted to work on our docks, because that's what we're going to see the first, when we come home from Journeys. Alright, now after all that grinding and building, we're ready to go adventure a little bit. And I want froggies. Yep, I want a bunch of froggies. Uh, and we're going to go straight north. We've been around this area a lot, and nothing even then looks like a swamp. So that's what we do. We head north as far as we need to go. Uh, along the way, we do stop at some villages and some uh, ruined portals and things like that, just collecting what we can. Uh, nothing too crazy. We also got some uh, sea pickles, and we stole these little bees home. It's pretty sad. Yoink. Right here. 6,000 blocks later, we find a swamp. 6,000. Uh, we did steal ourselves a beehive, though. That's pretty cool. Okay, well, let's go fight through the night, see if we can't get some slimes. And this swamp, I'm gonna be honest, was an absolute bust. Like, it's terrible. There's no frogs. And these are the only slimes I could find. And guess what? They dropped two slime balls. Yeah. But the good news is, there's another swamp pretty close, so we venture off. Uh, this one looks more promising. It was only, like, a hundred blocks away from that tiny one. And, alright. Do they have frogs? Ooh, froggies, froggies. Oh, and there's two of them. And we go ahead and get these guys in love mode, and it takes them quite a while. I guess they just weren't feeling it. But eventually, they get the job done. We will protect these with our life. What was uh, looking like it was going to be a huge, huge waste of time and resources actually turned out okay. Um, while our little tadpoles over there grow up so we can relocate them, uh, we spent our night just clearing the area so the slimes can spawn and uh, stealing all their slime. Uh, we got about uh, about a stack, a little bit less, uh, so we're feeling okay, and we're probably going to come back here and make like a little slime farm later, maybe. Not sure. Maybe. Home is 6,000 blocks that way. Now, here's my thinking here. Um, it took a long time to find this swamp, and I want to come back here at some point and set up what I, what I would like to call the killing fields. Uh, just a big area where only slimes can spawn. So what I think we're going to do, and I also want to come back to get a bunch of these blue flowers. I really like these flowers. Um, and we need to look for a nether fortress anyways. I think we are going to go and find ourselves some gravel and uh, a little bit of iron. No, I already have iron. And we're going to make a uh, nether portal and uh, see if we can't make our way home through the nether. Because we're going to want to come back here at some point. And until we get an elytra, which I'm going to be honest with you, it's next episode. It, yep, absolutely. We're, we're, we're doing that. I need shulkers. I need elytra. It has to happen. Uh, inventory management sucks in this game, and I need to fix that. So we fire up our nether portal, hoping it's going to be a spawn of nothing but pillows and safety nets. 
Guess what? It was not. Yeah. You might be wondering here why I'm running from this piglin. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. See, I owe this dude money, okay? And he's an old friend of mine, and I didn't really want to have to kill him. I knew he was going to cool down in a minute, and I was like, dude, bro, you just need to chill. And he just wasn't listening, though. He slapped me around a little bit, and I'm like, all right, you need to go take a break. Go take a nap. I'll come back to you. Well, that was not a fun spawn. That that, that kind of sucked, actually. Is it is this guy nice now? Hey, we're cool, bro. Right? Yeah, we're cool. And so we start peeling across this thing with wood. Uh, now you might be wondering here, why is this not burning? Because fire ticks off in my world. So it, it it always is. It annoys the crap out of me. However, it would not have saved me from a gas blast. I would have definitely died. So we make our way up and uh, try to look for a way to get out of here. We do take a moment to kill our first blaze. He does drop a blaze rod, which will let us uh, not only get ourselves an ender chest, but also will get us uh, enchanting potions for quite a while. And we do finally make it home. Uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, I had to dig up to the roof to, to, to navigate here, but we made it. All right, day 186, and we're back from the nether in that swamp that was stupidly far away. And we did pretty good. Um, we found this one bee nest. Uh, we're going to need more of those. Um, we found our soul sand. We also found our first blaze rod and a fortress. We're going back there, but we got to build ourselves another road because that was annoying. Um, we are going to breed up these froggies. Unfortunately, we're only going to be able to get two of the variants today because the cold one, there are no cold bottoms anywhere near me. Like, this is all warm crap. Uh, but next episode, we are 100% going to go kill an ender dragon. And if you didn't know, you can breed the cold frogs in the nether. Or not in the nether, in the, uh, in the end. So that's what we're going to do. But for right now, we're going to get these other ones set up because I want frog lights. And then we just take a little chillaxing moment here. Uh, my spazzy brain really needed it, and we just kind of put some tadpoles in some holes, just so the froggies don't escape when they grow up. It was much needed. And right back to the grind and the spazzing. Uh, we go ahead and finish up our frog light farm. Uh, now, it's worth noting here that I don't actually remember who showed me how to build this farm. It definitely is not my design, but it is awesome, and if I can figure out who did, I'm putting it in the description. And we go ahead and bring our last little couple froggies that we have. Uh, now, we still have to get the last ones from um, uh, the end whenever we go there. And AFK in for 15 minutes. See what we get. All right, my dudes. Uh, the farm is working. Uh, them golems over there just punching uh, magma cubes around like they're supposed to. Little ones fall in and uh, the frogs eat them. Let's go see what we got from this thing from 15 minutes. And this is 15 minutes of work. Not only do we get some magma cream, we got four full uh, stacks of blocks. And we're actually missing three frogs because we still have to get the uh, the cold biome ones. Uh, yeah, like I said earlier, this thing is stupidly effective. I highly suggest you build it because frog lights, uh, they're awesome. Day 199, and we put in so much work. Oh my gosh. At this point, we just wanted to play around with some shapes. Like, I always had an idea of what I wanted to go here. Uh, I was thinking castle-ish. Not necessarily a castle, but something like it. I'm not really sure. I'm just kind of shaping things out and uh, going to see how it plays. Um, but one thing's for sure, it's going to change 942 times because I will never be happy with it. Well, some things I'm happy with, but... It's going to change, like, a lot. Well, that's about it. But I will say that I had a uh, really great time with you awesome peoples. And uh, uh, the next one, it, it's going to be crazy. Uh, yeah. Um, we're definitely going to be uh, murdering the Ender Dragon and uh, doing some end looting and really getting our uh, build train going. 
Uh, don't pay attention to the uh, whatever that thing is in the background. Uh, I'll figure it out. It's it's going to be cool. I promise. Welcome back to chapter three of our hardcore series. Uh, now I usually like to do these episodes in a hundred day increments, and I think we're going to keep rolling like that unless somebody tells me otherwise. But our first two hundred days went amazing. We set up our iron farm, our sugarcane farm, did some decorations, built a dock, went to the nether, uh, got some frogs, built this creeper farm, built a custom mountain on top of it. I call it a mountain, it's more like a hill. We'll do more with it later. Um, we have done tons and tons of stuff, and I have tons more to do. And this episode, this chapter, is going to be a big one. I have so many ideas for this one, and... Uh, it's going to be a grind. It's going to be a grind. But like in every one of my worlds, I'm starting to feel the need to soar. I need to fly. And this guy right here in my other world, he couldn't. No, he tried, but he just did not make it. So in this one, we're going to make sure we do. All right, my peoples, uh, this one's going to be a big one. We have a few very specific goals I want to get done today. Uh, we are going to kill an ender dragon and definitely get an elytra. And some other cool stuffs from uh, the end. That, that That's priority number one. We're going to do that probably here just a little bit. Uh, number two is this monstrosity I'm constructing back here. I'm just going to freestyle it. See what it comes out to be. I'm not really sure. But hopefully it's going to be cool because I'm going to keep changing it till it is. Um, I also want to go and uh, rescue some pandas and turtles. Why? Because pandas and turtles. They're, I like them. They're cool. Anyways, let's let's see what happens. Have you ever seen a dummy start a large project with uh, limited uh, inventory space, no planning, and uh, real, no real idea what he's doing in general at this point? Um, but we're kind of just feeling it out because that's how we roll. We just kind of just, just do stuff and see what happens. But I'm guessing at some point we'll gain a little traction and my voice will probably just cut out. So I wasted 29 of our days building this monstrosity, but I do like the way it's coming out. Uh, of course, there's still tons and tons of work done, and oh, we're going to wait and finish this once we get shulkers. In hindsight, probably should have done that first. Uh, I really should have. Uh, most of my wasted time was running back and forth getting supplies that I kept forgetting. Um, but whatever. It's done, and I built it. I ain't going back now. But let me show you what I have planned for these buildings. Now, tons and tons of details uh, still needed across this entire thing. 
Uh, like for instance here, the front of this is boring, but it won't be, trust me. And this is going to be our permanent storage room, and it's going to be a big one. Uh, store all our good, good stuff except our collectibles. Uh, they'll go somewhere a little more special, you know, things like the dragon egg, uh, creeper heads. And we are um, going to be breeding up or breeded up and uh, trading with our villagers, trying to get the stuff we need to go to the end and immediately enchant an elytra. Uh, and we do have plans for this little villager hall. We're thinking that maybe we want to uh, turn it into like a little city council area where only certain villagers are uh, are living there. Uh, I'm thinking um, the masons and the cartographers. Now, I love this part here. It took me a good minute to figure out how I wanted to do it, but once I figured it out, I was really happy. And then, of course, our enchanting room where we're sitting around enchanting dirt. Just kidding, it's just an enchanting room, but I left all the dirt here. It early build phases. Well, early build phases, you know. If you don't have random dirt sitting around, you're not building. And this one here, we're not sure if we want to do this or not yet. We're thinking down there could be a map room, but I'm also thinking it's unnecessary because we could put it on those walls right there. And this is going to be our courtyard. And it's going to be pretty. It's going to be really pretty. I'm going to put all kinds of flower, uh, flower gardens in here and like little seating areas. And yeah, we still need something up there. I'm not sure what yet. And we still need walls, and we still need to extend this thing up the mountain, because this is just the front of this castle or whatever it is. I'm not even sure, but it's going to be something eventually. And in this garden, we are going to find a way to uh, hide our villager a uh, little uh, feed hole in here, because we're not moving the villager breeder downstairs. I like it there. It's staying. So we're going to have to figure out a way to uh, work this in. Since we're getting ready for Super Duper Adventure Time, we're, where we fight a bunch of scary things, we uh, still have a couple things to do before we roll out. Uh, like trading these guys uh, for emeralds and levels. And taking a shot at uh, enchanting a chest plate. It, it came out okay. Whatever. And back to the trading. It happens a lot. I'm not going to show most of it. I mean, a lot. And we finally got one of our villagers to give us a decent book. Uh, later on, this guy gives us absolute garbage. This is the only decent thing this guy has. But this guy, on the other hand, he's the superstar with the sharpness 5 coming in clutch. And the looting. That's what the next important one we needed so we can get all those uh, blaze rods. And we roll an epic sword. Oh, yes. And we already have the other two things we want to slap on it. And we go ahead and do that. This thing is awesome. We keep the villager train a rolling, uh, not only working towards our adventure coming up, but also just the future in general. Oh, and that's perfect. And we go ahead and score the last book we needed, and one of the big ones, too. Now, this guy here, we do take a little bit of time and go ahead and get our farmers going. Uh, we're looking specifically ones with pumpkins, because not only will they give us golden carrots, we'll be able to trade those pumpkins and melons for lots and lots of monies. And this guy's a winner. That's not terrible. We'll take it for now. And we go ahead and throw some enchants on this bad boy. All right, we got a decent bow and golden carrots. We're feeling good. All right, my dudes. Now, we did a lot of choring. Um, we bred up a bunch of villagers, built a crazy weird castle. Only the front of it. The, the backside is probably going to be even bigger. I'm not really sure. Um, should be fun, though. Uh, but with all that being done, we have a different thing ahead of us. We need to go to the nether. We need blaze rods. Yeah, and maybe maybe some wither skulls if we see them. Or, you know, see some wither skeletons. Um, and we also need a bunch of ender pearls. So, it's adventure time. All right, we're going to follow our path that we uh, used to get back here when uh, we were originally at the uh, swamp. But we're going to screenshot our coordinates, and on the way home, we're going to dig a better path to our little uh, hub here.
we make it back to our original path, and uh, we're uh, getting ready for some brawling. All right, well, there's our fortress. It's going to be a pain getting back home because I already forgot where I came out at. And it's worth noting here that I did come down a little sick, so I'm going to do the best I can here with my voice. We spent so much time building that I really just needed to slap some things around for a little bit. And that's what we did and made me feel a whole lot better. With a pretty successful little uh, another fortress run here, uh, we decided we wanted to get out of here. Uh, but we did want to get some of this soul soil and soul sand. And then uh, our dumb dumb brains finally figure out uh, which way we came from. I ain't gonna lie. It took a minute. I actually had to go back and look at my replay footage to figure out, dude, where'd you come from? And this right here is one of the craziest things that's ever happened to me in this game. I have never had a gas fly this close to me unless I'm flying as well. He just came up. He wanted a hug. And I was like, dude, I ain't trying to hug right now. I just bought a fortress. And then he said, he said his cousin after me, and I'm like, dude, I already dealt with your other cousin. Like, bro, I'm just trying to go home. And we do finally make it home. And I ain't gonna lie, this terrified me. It's, yep, yep, I'm, I'm, I'm a super cool gamer. Yep. Well, we made it back home. Uh, not gonna lie, there were some close calls. There was a lot of close calls. Uh, just, uh, you know, that's a bad view. Just building this tiny bridge here, uh, built, uh, gave me tons of anxiety. Oh my gosh, like, one guest, I'm done, world's over. But we did get back with a lot of cool stuff. Oh yeah, we even found a couple diamonds. Uh, got some soul sand, some soul soil, um, a full stack of blaze rods, that's just a win. Uh, a bunch of horse armor, our first mob head. Uh, we scored some nether wart. Um, so we're going to go unload this stuff, and we're going to come right back, because uh, we still need ender pearls. Going right back into the nether, we're looking for ender pearls, and these guys are really, really stubborn. Uh, I think it's because I found a for uh, forest that spawned too close to the ceiling, so it was too lit up. So I just started uh, farming some of the wood. I wanted it anyways. And we eventually did find some endermen. And, of course, we put them in a boat, as we do with almost everything. I don't know why. I like boats. And we just kind of do this for a little bit. Um, just getting wood, trapping intermittent boats. Uh, we eventually get everything we need. Um, but it does take a while. A, it, a long while. It, it, I would have felt a lot worse if this was something I was doing in the overworld. At least we saved some days with no day-night cycle. And I believe these are the last couple of Endermen we needed. We wanted 16 just to be sure that our uh, stronghold journey went smoothly. Uh, 
dudes. That took forever. I don't understand why these Endermen weren't spawning. Uh, but we did get a whole bunch of this warped wood, which I plan on using quite a bit. Let's go home and uh, get our stuff ready to go kill an Ender Dragon. Oh, yeah. Day 244, and we've had two very, very successful Nether Adventures. Uh, the Endermen were really stubborn. Uh, I don't even know how I'm going to piece that footage together. Hopefully it comes out cool because I had to run around a lot uh, to get these guys to spawn. But we got 16 pearls and plenty of blaze rods. If it takes more than that, then we just have some really, really bad luck. But we're going to go sell, uh, find ourselves a uh, stronghold as soon as we put all this crap away. But let's just take note. While we were waiting for those Endermen to spawn and clearing out an area for them to spawn... We got so much of this warped wood, and I love warped wood. Honestly, the castle roof, if I would have had warped wood when I built it, I probably would have used it instead of the mangrove. Might change it later. Uh, at least not until we get an elytra, because I'm not going to climb up and down, up and down. But for now, we're good to go. All right, so we have everything uh, that we need to go to the end. We got uh, Eyes of Ender, a way to make more uh, mending and unbreaking to put on an elytra. As soon as we get it, as long as well as the anvil. Uh, we also got firework rockets, so we can fly around the end. Um, we're ready to go. Let's see where this Eye of Ender uh, takes us. Oh, also we got our bucket of tadpoles because we're gonna grow these guys up in the end and bring them home. So we got our cold variants. Let's go. So we go ahead and chuck our pearl. And we were really hoping this was gonna be a water adventure, but it's not looking like it because we are heading west, way into the jungle. And because we always stay on track and never get distracted, we steal these bees home again. Still west of this annoying jungle, all mountain. Uh, we did stop here to get some obsidian, because we do want to make a portal to get back from the stronghold, or back to it, I should say, because we're probably going to be coming back to it again. And with our pearls stopping, we decide we just have to dig down through this huge freaking mountain. We do eventually find our way all the way down, and this is kind of an interesting one. Uh, I've been through a lot of strongholds in my day. Uh, not only was this thing at bedrock, but we also found a geode right next to it. And the actual stronghold spawned in the deep dark, which was kind of cool and a little scary. But this thing was super tiny. It, it did not take long. Uh, this little portal here was right next to that uh, um, library you just saw. And it had almost none of the Eyes of Enders that we needed. We took a second and get our little base set up because we're going to be coming back here. Uh, assuming we survive, that is. We can go ahead and light our portal. We're going to jump through and get our coordinates so we know how to get, uh, get back here again. Now, before we do, though, there's a reason I did not break that spawner. Uh, see, I have a data pack called All Mob Heads because I like collecting mob heads. They're cool. Um, and I wanted to get one of the silverfish uh, mob heads before I broke it, and there we go. And of course, after I got it, I broke it immediately, because these things are annoying. And we're just going to jump through, uh, mark our coordinates, and then we need to go fight our ender dragon. And we actually get a decent spawn. I don't think this is very far at all from our actual main hub, which is pretty sweet. Alright, here we go. Let's get some building blocks and go do this. And I did not think that far ahead with that. Um, we have wood if we need it. Yeah, we should be okay. I ain't gonna lie to you dudes, this is gonna be a fight. Uh, I forgot to bring bottles, so all that lingering poison, dragon's breath, that's eh, gonna be an issue. But we're gonna see what happens. And in we go. And our spawn doesn't look too bad. I've seen worse. And we go ahead and do my favorite thing in this game. Bridging over the uh, the void. Oh, I hate it. And I'm going to say it a thousand times so get used to it. But you know what I'm not going to say? Much in the next couple minutes. I'm going to let this music tell the story. Thank you. 
So that was a pretty fun fight. Yeah, I had a good time. Uh, didn't, there wasn't even that many close calls, honestly. Uh, that track's called Still Winning. And it's by my uh, my good, good friends, uh, Mobcat Music. Uh, I mean that literally. Like, this is not a promotion. They're actually my good friends. Um, or I said he is. Um, but yeah, check him out in the description. Dude not only does, uh, like, DJ and hip-hop stuff, dude's an amazing guitarist. He even does live shows. Um, he even rocks on a keyboard. Um... So, yeah, check them out and send them some love. Well, we did it. Ender Dragon's dead. But that's the only part of the reason we came out here. We want to go over here. Is that seriously above the void? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Okay. So we go ahead and uh, head towards this stupidly placed portal. Doing my favorite thing in the game. Uh, I don't know if you can tell here by the footage, but every time I go to place a block, uh, I almost look at an Enderman, which would have almost guaranteed a good chance of death. Like, it, it's, yeah, I probably would have died. But we do make it over. And just taking a quick second here to figure out where the crap we want to go. So we need to figure out which direction we are going. Um, south looks pretty dead. West looks pretty dead. Uh, that's a maybe. And that's a maybe. So I think we just kind of go that direction and see what happens. Because I'm not, I'm not bridging over all that. That's just dumb. And we bridge along. Uh, fun fact on this one, uh, as I was doing this, I had a toddler yelling in the background. So, yeah, it didn't mess with my anxiety at all. We pitter-patter our little feetsies along. Um, still heading north, uh, just kind of checking for new directions. You know, uh, even though there's tons of ways to die in the end, uh, traversing the larger islands, pretty peaceful. Well, I definitely want to get over there... I don't even know. Um, oh, I guess back to bridging. Well, we got ourselves a city, but do we have a ship? Oh, and we do have a ship. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm going to take a second to get my inventory sorted, and we're going to raid this bad boy. It looks like it's pretty promising, too. Should come out with some decent amount of shulkers. Um, and then uh, we're going to enchant this elytra, assuming that the one's up there, and then we're going to fly around. Heading into our first end city, we kill our first shulker. Oh, yes, because we want lots of these shulker boxes. Uh, but I want to talk to you guys about something. You guys ever notice that these things are like heads in uh, boxes just spitting at you? Now, I know, like, alpacas and, like, llamas and stuff spit at people and things like that. Even people spit at people. But, like, if you were walking down the street and an alpaca or a person spit at you, you'd be like, dude, that's wrong. But, like, if a head in a box spit at you, you'd be like, dude, I am moving to a different city. This is ridiculous. Like, what? Why are there heads in boxes? This, this is really, just really weird. And that's our first shulker acquired. Oh, yes. Um, this is going to make building so much easier and just the game better. So we head up the tower just uh, dodging spitballs and collecting shells. Uh, this is one of my favorite places to fight in an in city, honestly. It's pretty fun. Just make sure you have golden carrots. Now, I have raided a lot of in cities in my day, like a lot. And this one did not uh, disappoint with the loot. The loot was real, real good, as you will see in just a second. Oh, 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 yes. And the loot train keeps on rolling. Uh, we're getting some really, really good luck with this place, uh, including this Spire armor trim right there. That's pretty sweet. Let me go ahead and pearl over to the purple yacht. And head right to the best place in the game.
And while we're floating here, we do collect even more, more good, good loot. This one wasn't the best. And we're just going to take a little moment here to see what's behind us. Oh my gosh. Now, this is not the end of the game. We got tons of stuff to do, but this is going to make things so much cooler. Let's grab it. And we decide we need to give this thing the most, uh, uh, it needs to have the most graceful of names. It just has to. Something elegant. And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Makes my heart weep. All right, I think this sand city's about done. Um, we're definitely coming back here and uh, get some more shulkers, but we're doing okay. And I think we might just head the same direction we've been going and see if we can't figure out a way out of here. We got frogs to breed and pandas to play with and all kinds of other silly, you know, more important stuff than, you know, you know, beating the game and all that crap. And we forgot to bring leads, so we gotta get creative with breeding these froggies. We only want them to be able to jump in, in, in right there, in that portal. So, here's what we do. And if they don't jump in on their own, then we'll break those back blocks and uh, push them in with water. And I'm just going to put myself in a little hidey hole until they uh, grow up and do their thing. I honestly don't know how that mission could have went any more successful. Oh, yes. That, that was good times. That was good times. I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Feeling pretty good. And since we have this elytra, let's uh, fly up there and uh, come back around to our little peninsula and see what it looks like from the air. Let's just slow roll it. We got our little uh, custom mountain. Okay. Okay. Still got a lot of work to do, but there's potential. That's some good potential. You know, I was really, really uh, not digging this when I started building it. But even though I spent a ridiculous amount of time on it so far, and it's not even near done, I'm starting to like it. It's, it's yeah, it's starting to feel like me. With so much done on this episode and fighting the uh, Ender Dragon as well as the end, we go and take on some of the most dangerous missions known to Minecraft kind. 
like gathering dangerous bees. I have classified information that says these bees are uh, smuggling anthrax in their uh, stingers. And uh, stealing eggs from turtles. Now, you might be wondering, these turtles look uh, just innocent, right? No, 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 no. I've seen turtles do karate, okay? I'm pretty sure they were teenagers. And random flyby of our stuff. I like it. You see that uh, panda there munching that bamboo? He wishes it was my arm. Oh yeah, dangerous. But we bring the savage home anyways. Special Ops mission codenamed Panda was a success. Still need a playful one. The lazy one he's cool, but I like the playful ones. We get our little temporary honeycomb farm set up here. Now, these guys will have a cool little greenhouse at some point to play in. Uh, but for right now, I just need their honeycombs because uh, I want to work with copper. And uh, yeah, I don't want just green. And we get our last frogs in the farm. And I think, I think I'm think i actually going to do a tutorial on this farm. It's been done before, but I can't figure out who I learned it from. So I'm just going to do one. And it, it's, it qualifies as simple and effective. It works really well. And these guys immediately get to snacking. Oh yeah, we got all our frog lights now. And then we go play with our bees some more. And you're probably thinking, dude, they're just bees. Calm down. And I'm like, I disagree. The little baby bees are cute. And uh, if you don't think that, then I say you're jaded. But you're welcome to your opinion. But I think they're cute. But I'm also weird, so there's that. Now, we are on the hunt for a bunch of sand now. Uh, we have a bunch of shulkers, and to the east, we knew there was a bunch of savannah. Uh, we haven't seen a desert yet, but there's a good chance a desert might be uh, connected to it. It turns out we were wrong, we had to go way farther. Uh, but we did find it, and we went ahead and set up our mining operation, just uh, taking note of OSHA guidelines, because we didn't want to get in any trouble. We wanted to follow the uh, environment or sur environmental survey that we had to do. Just taking all the precautionary steps. After blowing a bunch of stuff up and uh, just grinding really hard on this episode, we decided to take it easy for just a little bit and enchant some new gear. Got a pretty sweet helmet, and we're going to combine that with some other stuff here in a little bit. And uh, we pretty much wasted all our levels on these two pieces of gear, but it doesn't matter, because uh, we have an experience farm with all our villagers. And we get yet another pretty sweet little roll on our boots. Now, we have the base down for both our uh, helmet and our boots, so we go ahead and just hit up our villagers for the books we need to make these pretty epic. And we don't really care about our levels at all. Um, so we just go ahead and just make the best helmets we can. These actually might be our permanent helmets, as long as our levels uh, for enchanting allow us to finish it off later. Because sometimes it gets too expensive. I'm not really sure how it works. I just know you always do the most expensive one first. 
And we have to give our gear a nice sweet name as well. And there we go. That's a pretty sweet helmet. Uh, the Aqua Affinity and the Respiration were really the two we were looking for, as well as, as, well as the depth, uh, depth Strider on the boots. Because uh, we have some new adventures coming up um, next chapter, and uh, we're going to need both of those. Or all three of those. Um, I, I can do numbers, yes. And we got our Thames. Oh, yes. Um, we're feeling pretty good. Um... We don't really care about our chest plate. We're very rarely going to be wearing it. I don't know why, but I have this weird rule. Once I get an elytra, I really don't take it off. But anyways, I have a little bit of building I want to do before uh, we call this thing on episode. With day 300 coming really, really quick. Uh, I could have just put all this uh, to music, honestly. But I just decided I wanted to chat with you guys. Um, the more and more I work on this world, I start seeing how I'm going to tie everything together. As well, there's future things I want to do. Um, it's probably going to take a while. Like I I'm hoping to be around at day 10,000. I don't know if it's going to happen, but that's my goal. Um, but anyways, uh, we're building a little pumpkin and melon farm here. And it's going to make us really, really rich. Uh, now, we're going to work through the night and the day uh, for most of this. Uh, instead of just during the day. Um, now, I, one thing I will say here is I have always hated sandstone. Uh, but here recently, I've kind of just been playing with color palettes, and I'm starting to like it. Like, I really do. I think it goes good with Deep Slate, and uh, it's, it's, it's something I'm really starting to like. And utilizing that warped wood we got earlier. Man, it's a great block. Also, check out them villagers in the back. Now, these guys are important. So, not every villager uh, that you make a farmer has uh, pumpkins. They always have melons. Both those guys have pumpkins, so we definitely wanted to cure them because they're going to make us so much money. And with the farm pretty much done and looking pretty good, we still have some details to do. We decided we wanted to uh, make a little uh, sewage drain from the castle and turn it into a little uh, stream. Now, we needed a spot to uh, AFK our creeper farm. Now, in the past, I've done uh, custom islands. I've done hot air balloons. I've done um, uh, airship, kind of like I'm doing right now. I've even done, like, exploding stars. Uh, but I did decide to go with an airship. Now, in hindsight, as I'm recording this voiceover, I think I'm going to change uh, something on it. Uh, I build the balloon portion. And I think I'm going to come back and go super steampunky and put propellers holding it up instead of the balloon. Because I did not like the balloon. But the airship, it's solid. Well fam, we're sitting at day 300. Which means we need to wrap this one up. But don't worry, I'll be grinding on the next one pretty much right away. A um, little sad we didn't get more done on the, uh, the castle back there, but... I can definitely envision a, uh, you know, just a sprawling castle in the middle of the of the peninsula with uh you know like cool uh little villager housing around it uh making it feel like an actual town paths and shops uh blacksmiths uh those little dirt huts back there they have clerics in them uh, i'm gonna cure them and they're gonna be my bartenders because we're gonna make a uh, an inn um i envision docks uh around this most of this thing here uh with awesome ships in the harbor. I have so many ideas I want to do for this world, but there really is so much time. Um, so that's just going to have to wait for the next one. But for this one, we fought an ender dragon. Uh, uh, we fought another fortress. We, we, we raided a little bit of the end. We got ourselves shulkers. And I'm feeling pretty good. Like This is really starting to feel like home to me, which is important because if I'm playing a world and it doesn't feel like home, I just won't play that world. But this one here, I immediately just want to go and do more. And now that we have wings and shulkers, oh my gosh, the building is just going to fly. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I, I mean that from my heart. I, I am having so much fun doing this. And I was actually sick during this whole thing, or at least about half of it. So, you know, everybody out there is going through something in their life. So if I made one person smile with this video... I did my job. Uh, peace and love, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back to Chapter 4, you awesome people. And uh, 
This one's a wild one. Uh, we get a ridiculous amount of stuff done because uh, my OCD brain and ADHD brain, com you know, they collide and, well, I spaz out and just can't stop doing stuff. But, uh, yeah, without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. And by into it, I mean a river because we need to get certain things to head towards our uh, our goals here. So we head into the local giant river uh, looking for any uh, drowned chucking tridents or holding shells. Uh, and I decided to up the uh, brightness on these recordings because, well, I watched my previous video and while on my computer, um, the nether fighting looked fine. Uh, but when then I watched it on a uh, smaller device, it was pretty dark. So, we live, we learn. You know, this editing thing, it, it takes some work. But yeah, we're just dodging spears, fighting drowns. Um, once you get Depth Strider and Golden Carrots, this is actually really fun to do. Uh, at least for me it is. Um, but we're not having the best of luck. Uh, this is taking quite a while. Uh, at this point, we're probably at roughly two days in. And really have not gotten much. We haven't even gotten but a couple shells. And anybody watching this who's uh, new to the game or just takes it really casually, don't do this until you're properly geared. These Trident boys will murder you. And I'm seriously not joking. Uh, fun fact, uh, when I started recording for YouTube, um, I chose a different world for my hardcore series. Jumped into the uh, river on the first day to get some fishies and got three shot by a drowned on the very first day. And I said, well, um, I'm finding a different world. Yeah, that, that, that happened. That happened. But don't you guys worry. That'll never happen again. A drowned will never kill me. And look at that. We get our first drowned head. And just continuing on, getting really, really tired, and then, boom, we score. Well, we got our trident. Took forever, but we did it. Man, might as well just finish off this night before we head home. It'd be cool to get two tridents. One for loyalty, one for uh, Riptide. Uh, so we try our luck with a couple more drowned. Uh, don't pay attention to those hearts, okay? We're, we were not close to death. Not at all. We, we, we were... Nope. We were good. Yep. Flying back home with a, a trident, some shells, and a couple mob heads. Uh, I think we even got a little bit of copper. Uh, nothing too crazy. We might build a copper farm at some point. We go and we see what this uh, thing offers us in the enchantment table. Well... Uh, it's offering us unbreaking on this wonderful spork. Um, we're gonna need to get some levels though. So in super speedy mode, we go and visit our farmer villagers, uh, aka the cash cows, the uh, the ATM, and they go ahead and just trade for all them good good emeralds and uh, levels. And as we're doing this, we're thinking, man, we really need to make this place look pretty. Uh, that's definitely not foreshadowing that's about to happen. No, no, I definitely won't do that this episode. Uh, it's not terrible, but we definitely need loyalty. Ah. I can't remember. Did any of our librarians have loyalty? None of them did, but we did have one that we haven't finished leveling up yet. That's very ironic. Um, Is it worth it, though? Maybe. 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 Um... Yeah, let's try it. We did go ahead and buy uh, four Loyalty 1 books, and we combine them all up to make a Loyalty 3 book. Uh, some people like Rip Riptide on their trident. I don't. I like Loyalty. Uh, I don't know why. It's just my preference. And that's worth it. Uh, we do need a Mending book, though, because I don't want this thing to break. We hit up our Mending Villager real quick. And, of course, we slap it on there. And we have to give this thing a, an absolutely epic name. That'll do, Spork. That'll do. We have our milk bucket, our trident, our doors for air, and golden carrots. Uh, so we all do our first ocean monument. We're on this hunt for sponges. 
The only thing we really want from this, uh, actually, that's a lie. We want Dark Prismarine. Uh, we're going to set up a farm for that eventually because I love the block. Uh, and I'm probably going to be adding it to uh, several builds this episode, honestly. And if anybody out there's never fought an ocean monument before, it's not that bad. You just have Respiration, Depth Strider, Golden Carrots, and I like to bring a Trident. It, it's really the only good use for it, but dang, is it good for fighting in here. But we go ahead and break in. After taking nine years to break in, we start hunting for the big fishies. Um, and these guys also really aren't that hard to fight, uh, especially if you have a trident. A bow can work too, so can a sword, but if you use a sword, you're going to take uh, thorn damage every time you attack them. And that's one down. Off to the second one. Um, now two will spawn on the bottom level, usually. They can move. And the last one will be at the top, and here's the one at the top. Now, once this guy's dead, we can uh, chug our milk and get rid of the Spoon of Dread. Friggin' mining fatigue, so annoying. And then we get on the hunt for sponges. Now, the best way to find sponges is go to the, the second level from the top and just start digging around. Uh, unfortunately, this one only had one sponge room. So we decide to take as much uh, Dark Prismarine as we can find and grab the sponges, and we're calling this one a bust. Well, semi-bust. And we head back home because we need more milk. And just drop off our loot and see what we actually got. Alright, that went pretty well. Uh, we got some sponges, um, a fair amount of dark prismarine, a couple of these templates. Uh, some sea lanterns. Uh, that is not enough sponges, though. I, I was kind of hoping for more than one sponge room. So we might give this one more go. At an even further north, we do find another ocean monument. Uh, now this one we got lucky as far as getting into it. We were able to break in from the bottom before mining fatigue set in. Uh, however, finding a path to the Elder Guardians proved difficult. Uh, I had found a sponge room, but I hadn't found any of the Guardians to kill yet. But we do eventually find them, and we do make them not living anymore. Uh, it's also worth noting here that sometimes an ocean monument can spawn with no sponge rooms, and it's really the only reason to come in here. Or it can spawn with four sponge rooms. Uh, I don't really know how many is the max, but often it does not give you any, which is really stupid. And we go ahead and get ourselves some guardian heads. Uh, I highly recommend that data pack. It doesn't give you any benefit. It's just a cool little collectible. We dig around just looking for uh, more sponge rooms with zero luck. Uh, so we give up. Uh, we're ready to go start building stuff. I really need to. So we decide we're just going to get our sponges. We're going to get our dark prismarine. And we're going to get the crap out of here. Because I'm starting to get annoyed. And I got other stuff to do. Uh, so we head on home, and we're just getting ready for a building phase. Uh, I think it's going to be a good one. Alright, so we've done a little bit of peaceful mobbing already. Um, there's going to be more fighting to come, I guarantee it. Because I can't just build all the episode. All, my brain will go insane. I have to, I have to kill some stuff. Um, but I want to organize my shulker boxes, and I want to color code them. And I want to do some flower gardens anyways, so we are just going to roam with our elytra until we find some flowers. And uh, any other cool stuff that we can use for decoration. So we end up really close to the Cherry Grove uh, biome we found on uh, Chapter 1. And we naturally just start collecting up all the flowers. We mostly focus on the ones that cannot be renewed with, uh, renewed with bone meal. Uh, but we got a couple shulkers with us, so we do try to get as much as we can. And of course we make an amazing discovery. Oh, if I had found this place earlier. Hello, bees. Yes, yes, I'm doing the bee thing again. I like bees. We gather as many flowers as we can. Uh, we'll probably come back here with a floor shifter later and just get ridiculous amounts, but for right now, we got building on the brain. With more than enough flowers to get our building going, we start yoinking beehives. One and a two. And you, you know we're going to get that third one. Come on now. You, you know your boy by now. And then we go take a nap on top of some uh, pretty pink trees. Waking up to our friends burning down below. And we were already out here anyways, and we saw that ice up on the mountain. 
Uh, I actually thought that was regular ice at first because I'm a dummy, which can be really useful for various builds. Um, but this is the packed ice. Uh, it, we might use it for something. I don't really know, but we were over here, so we got it. And we stopped at a village on the way home uh, just to yoink all their hay bales. I'm saying yoink a lot. Not sure why. And we head on home and get ready for our build phase. There are some big projects ahead, and color coding my uh, shulker boxes really helps my spazzy brain stay on track. That's what we do for a little bit. It's very important to this idiot. And we've gotten several stacks of seeds from our sniffers over there. Uh, so we just want to plant them up and get them growing so we can move them later. One of the last things we needed was birch leaves, but while we were collecting them, we found ourselves a little friend. Um, help me think of a name for this little dude. All right, so uh, we spent quite a bit of time just getting ourselves set up. Um, we just got ourselves a nice little doggy. Um, we were out there getting some birch leaves, and the reason I wanted the birch leaves is because we're using a lot of vibrant greens in our decorations, uh, and I want our path borders to be a darker green. Uh, a combination of some other things, too. And we also um, took our time to build ourselves some build boxes. Uh, we got different woods. Uh, one just has logs. Um, the other one has all planks and stairs and whatnot. And the other one is trap doors and uh, fences. You know, things for decorating. And this one here is literally just for decorating. Anything that I currently have that can be used for decoration. I don't know why, but I always make this one magenta. Because I can't think of anything else to use it for. And then we got our flowers. We got our, uh, you know, our, our gray stones. Um, I need to make a box for, uh, like, reds. And then our dark stones. Um, and then, of course, our, you know, our greenery. And uh, this is just a bunch of dirt. But we're going to spend a little time here and get our stuff tied in. Uh, I want to do a bunch of building this, one, this episode. But right now, everything is just kind of placed, but it's not tied in. So that's what we're going to work on.
right, so that was four straight hours of building, and I had a blast with it. This place is feeling like home. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, now, there are some details I might change later, but while I was building, I did get some ideas, and I got a plan for this whole freaking area. Obviously, we already know what castle is going to go right there. Um, still working on the details of that, but as far as the surrounding areas, and we might even work on the castle a little bit later, because uh, this is just phase one. This is phase one. Um, we want a path going all the way to the quarry. Uh, now, along that path, or at least a distance of it, we want this to be our farmland. Uh, from Pretty much from here all the way to wherever we end over there. That's going to be farmland, our cow barns, um, our chicken coops, uh, whatever else we put over there. And uh, it's going to look really cool. Now, over here, I want an inn to go right there. This is going to be our city area. Uh, I'll figure out how to divide it up and make it look really cool, but I do know I've decided an inn is going right there, and it's going to be pretty epic. Um, and this is going to be like our little uh, area where we're going to have lots of buildings. Some will be functional, some of them won't. Um, but this is like where people would be living, um, and we can, we're going to flatten that out, and it's going to go back quite a ways. And then the last thing I decided while I was doing this, right there to there, I want a bridge with an additional gatehouse, and then there's going to be a nice... Uh, underpass with the bridge where it goes into a canal and that's just gonna frame out our whole peninsula um but yeah we're only on day 240 which means not not 240 340 and we have 60 days left until we hit our 100 days assuming we survive that long but that's our plan let's go get some resources because uh, phase two needs to come quick now we still have a whole whole lot to do so we head right into the nether And we get a little feetsies moving because we really have no time to waste. We got grand, grand plans for this episode. And we need ourselves a beacon. Uh, yeah, like I said, grand plans. Um, and of course we started off uh, by uh, almost dying, as I do because I'm super big brain awesome good. We ended up just abandoning that fortress. Now luckily this other fortress was literally next to the other one. And uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, the fights were easy, but the spawns were really not coming all that great. Uh, looting's supposed to help a bunch. I call BS on that. Now, all in all, I can't really complain too much because we only had to kill about 50 of them. Uh, I've had much, much worse in other worlds before, so it is what it is. And that is our first Wither Skeleton Head. Two more to go. Alright, we have our three Wither Skulls. I don't really remember where I got the second one, but apparently I did at some point. We get our inventory right and we head right to the end because we need boxes and we need a, uh, a Nether Star. Nether Star? Is that what it's called? I don't know. Whatever it is. I need a beacon. And I'm going to be honest with you dudes, like, I'm going to cheese the wither. I'm going to cheese them real good. Uh, but at some point, I will. And I promise you guys this. Um, I will do it out in the world, open, crazy, blow up my own world fight. But right now, I just need to build and I need resources. Now, speaking of cheesing this guy, um, I'm going to try to explain it. But if you try to do this in your world and it doesn't go right, don't blame me. Um, the most important thing is it has to be two blocks deep. Uh, at the bottom of those two blocks, you need uh, the obsidian. And the tail of the wither must be in the center of the nether portal. If it's not, he's going to fly away and he's going to destroy the end. And that's on you. If he does, it's on you. And when this guy first pops, if you've never fought him before... Go away. Uh, when his bar is full, he's going to explode, and he will pretty much insta-kill you. Now here, I get distracted, and I did not wait, need to wait this long to go uh, go slap this guy around. He, he's stuck in there. He can't hurt me. He would have actually ended up killing himself from suffocation, but I, I, I need his stuffs. So we, we go ahead and beat him up. See, see how pro we are? We, we don't even take damage when we fight in bosses. Not even a little bit. But we, that's just how we are. Definitely not an exploit. 
You know, in hindsight, I probably should have filled that hole with uh, chickens before I killed that wither like that. Yeah, I would have got tons of wither roses. But I wasn't prepared, and I didn't have enough shulkers to bring that many eggs with me anyways. But it is what it is. We'll get those later. But we just head into some in cities. We raid quite a few of them, and uh, we almost look at that guy. He 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 did. We didn't we didn't look at him, but we do make some other ones mad. Yes, we do. And this goes on for a while. I'm not going to show most of it. We actually end up raiding three end cities and clearing them pretty much of all the shulkers. So we ended up with quite a bit. But we weren't really here for the pretty scenery and the footage. We had other things on our brain. And this guy here, I don't even remember when I made him mad, but I made him mad. And at some point, he attacks me, and I had shulkers shooting at me, and I actually make another one mad, too. Uh, you can wear a pumpkin on your head to avoid that, but eh. Alright, dudes. Well, that was a lot of adventuring, and I almost died. Uh, I really almost died. Uh, your boy was almost just done. Uh, series over. <laughs> But we didn't. We uh, yeah, Somehow we made an Enderman really mad, and I was getting attacked by Shulkers at the same time, and it, it got scary. But we did raid three more in cities, uh, getting some good loot. Um, we're going to use some of this. We actually already put the pants on that we got. Um, same with these, except they had mending on it. But more importantly, uh, we got over a stack of Shulker shells, because we already made two Shulkers here. Um, got some extra elytras, not that we're ever going to use them because this is a single player world and I'm already wearing one. Uh, another mob head, uh, just some good stuff. Uh, and of course we got the wither head, uh, from our data pack and, uh, we cheesed the, the, the wither pretty good. Uh, but yeah, we'll eventually fight that bad boy out in the, uh, open world, but I have building I want to do and I ain't have time for that right now. So we cheesed him, whatever. Um, there's actually three different heads I need to collect anyways if I'm going to collect all the heads, and one of them involves cheesing the dude. But this was pretty successful, so now we can build ourselves a beacon. Here we go, dudes. Building's about to hit the next level. Oh, oh yes. We knew that was a slime chunk. We saw slime spawning in it. And, uh, well, since uh, Caves and Cliffs, this type of slime uh, farm is not that effective until you uh, light things up. Once you clear out the caves, it starts cranking. And we found the, the main culprit. This cave literally, like, contained the entire mob cap. 
like the entire thing. And this was only part of it. This thing was freaking huge. So we spent some time lighting this whole thing up. Just killing like 200 mobs. Peaceful. And then we started wondering, is it working now? And then our buddy here gives us an answer. He says, yep, yep it is. So we just keep lighting more things up. We make a couple discoveries. Uh, we find ourselves a little spider spawner uh, that we're definitely going to incorporate into the quarry for sure. Um, one of my favorite farms, uh, actually. Um, I, I actually prefer it over zombie. Um, it's still not as good as skeleton. No, uh, no geo jet. There's got to be one though. I dug out so much, and our farm's starting to work. All right, dudes. Well, oh my gosh, we put in a lot of work. Uh, we are well over our 100 days, by the way. We're sitting on 112 right now. But I still have a couple things I still want to do. Um, I just want to tell you what uh, my plans are for this little, little bad boy right here. Now, granted, right now, it's square and it's ugly. It's not going to be. It's going to be rounded um, with uh, walkways going all the way around it, some bridges. I'm probably going to put a crane over there. I'm going to clear out a whole lot more of that. Really hoping to find a geode. I want an exposed geode, or maybe even two. But I don't know if we're going to get lucky. Like, how is there not a geode in this? There's like it's like 10 chunks here. Like, how? Well, whatever. Uh, hopefully we find one. If we don't, it is what it is. Uh, and I want a building to go right where that farm is. It's going to be a pretty cool farm. Uh, and I'll make it look really cool. Trust me. You, you know your boy by now. I don't just build ugly farms. Um, and I want a bridge going from there and a path going all the way to the castle. Yeah, yeah. Now, I don't think we're going to get to the castle today. Uh, I think that's going to be the main focus of next episode. Because we have, this isn't even all of them. We have 30 shulker boxes or more uh, filled with building materials. So we are going to be rocking on that next chapter. Oh, yes, we are. Uh, but for right this second, I want to go do a little bit more building on the farm side over there making things look really pretty. And then that's probably going to be it. Who knows, though, because my spazzy brain might say, go, go, go. So I'm going to finish this one off with just a little bit of uh, decoration and uh, getting our little cowborn going. Yeah, you'll see that in a minute. And the reason I want to do this at the end is, I'm going to be honest, I'm wore out. Uh, this episode took a lot of work. It took a lot of work. It's probably only going to be like 35 uh, minutes long or something like that. But let me tell you, it, we spent 125 days straight grinding. It was not AFKing at all. Straight grinding. But I, I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all because it came out awesome. Like, everything I did on this one uh, not only gets us ready for the next one, like, big time, but I, I'm proud of everything I did here today. Or, uh, you know, over these many, many days, actually. So, I don't know. I just wanted a little ch uh, chat with you guys. Uh, no editing. Just, uh, I'm, I'm going to one-shot this and just, uh, just yeah, just tell you I had a great time. Well, fam, uh, we're about out of time. Uh, sitting on day 425. Man, did we grind on this one. But I'm really happy with it. Oh, my gosh, I'm feeling so good. And next episode, next chapter... We have over 200,000 building blocks to work with now. Oh, that's right. We we dug real hard. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we still got to farm some wood, but no big deal. I really wanted to get the cows in here, but uh, it's just not going to happen this episode. Still got to decorate it up and finish some stuff, but little cow barn's looking pretty cool. I'm going to put a field over there, I think. But anyways, uh, I really hope everybody enjoyed this. This video took over 50 hours to record and produce uh, between editing and everything else. Um, so, man, if, if I made some people smile, then I'm calling it a win. Uh, but either way, I had fun with it, and I'm already excited for the next one. Uh, peace and love to you all, and uh, I hope your day's going great. Welcome back to our journey. And now, last chapter, we went a little spazzy, and uh, I had fun with it. Uh, I hope you guys did, too. Uh, this one here, we're set up pretty. Uh, we uh, dug out uh, several, several chunks of a quarry after we got our nether star. Uh, as well as made this place uh, look a lot more pretty. Um, I'm really loving it, honestly. Uh, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. We got lots and lots of stuff to do. And with uh, over 100,000 blocks at our disposal, closer to 200,000, uh, we are ready for some building, and definitely going to do some adventuring, but our building game is set up. 
However, we have a problem. It's all just sitting in shulkers. Yeah, or in other random chests. So, uh, want to see me spaz and put away hundreds of thousands of blocks in uh, 30 seconds? All right, so we're sitting here on day uh, 455. Uh, why? Because we spent 30 days uh, sorting through everything we have, including the stuff we got from the quarry. And it was a lot. But I want to introduce you all to what I like to call the Hall of Stuffs. And we got a lot of things. Now you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's not a lot of things. I mean, yeah, it's a lot, but it's not crazy. Well, let me show you. And it just goes on and on. Like, we even have a overflow room back here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, oh, look at the iron. Remember the iron farm we built on, uh, on, uh, Ep chapter one? You gotta remember, I've been trading these iron to the villagers, and I used almost three stacks of it for a beacon. So this isn't even all the iron we have. It, it works real good. Also, we got a lot of diamonds from that quarry. Uh, some of these were from whenever I was mob-proofing it um, in the caves, but most of it's from the quarry. But yeah, this is our great hall of stuffs. Uh, I am going to expand it, so let me just show you here. Um, this is all our woods. This is our all normal stones, just the stuff we'd find normally. This is like uh, netherish stuff. Uh, this is like uh, minerals. Don't know what this is going to be yet. This is our uh, frog lights and all our sea stuff. And this is going to be all the different terracottas. Now, this is just temporary. There is going to be uh, another wall for concrete and concrete powders and other things as we need the use for it. But until then, we are set up on supplies and we are ready to get building. Um, there's a few things I still want to collect, uh, like a bunch of mud uh, and some uh, wheat, because I want to use a bunch of mud brick. But other than that, we are ready to rock, my dudes. All right, now we have a kingdom to build. That is really our main goal of this episode. That's why we grinded so hard in the last one. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what we're trying to get done here today. All this temporary stuff needs to go. Uh, all our little friends here need to have homes. Um, little dirt huts with our bartenders need to go in and in. Uh, but before we get started with that, I do want to clear my head and just go for a little journey. I have uh, lots and lots of shulkers, um, plenty of rockets, more rockets in here. Uh, pretty much anything we need. Uh, the super adventure boxes in here. Uh, that's the blue one if you guys didn't know. It has all my adventure stuff. So we're just going to fly. We want to try to find a mangrove swamp, and we want to raid as many uh, villages for hay bales as possible, because I don't really have the biggest wheat field set up yet. And you guessed it, at some point your boy is going to set up an auto wheat farm. But I don't have time for that right now, and uh, I don't even know where I would put it just yet. So for right now, we're going to go adventuring for cool stuff. Um, let's see what we can find. We set off, and this journey actually becomes a lot more fun than I originally expected it to. We find a little shipwreck, uh, and of course we have to check it out, and we find a map. And your boy couldn't resist, we had to see what was in this treasure. And unlike the one we found on Chapter 1, this one was actually pretty good. Our first village of the journey, we uh, naturally just take all their stuffs. So I didn't even notice this Enderman just creeping on us. And then we find our first Badlands. Now, we originally stop here and we try to get some of the uh, terracotta. We get a little bit of it and then we quickly realize, nope, I'm coming back with the beacon. And then we're off to the next village. This village is much, much cooler than the last one. Now, this is the last village I'm going to show us raiding, but we raid like 12 of them. But at this point, we decided, yes, we need camels. We need them very badly. 
Oh, we gotta come back for this guy. He's so cute. Yeah. There might be another village here. I might be able to come back and get two at once. Oh, stand up, buddy. Stand up. Oh, yeah. We're coming back here. Yeah, we're marking this one. All right. So we found uh, some mangrove swamp. This time, uh, 5,000 blocks to the south. Now, if you remember on Chapter 2, we were looking for a regular swamp or a mangrove swamp, and we went north, and we had to travel 6,000 blocks. Uh, this world, I love it, but it does not like swamps anywhere near me. But we found one, so we are going to get as much as we can before we go home, because this was a journey. I needed a whole lot of mud, and I also wanted to get a bit of mangrove, uh, but I also didn't want to decimate this swamp. Uh... Partially because I just didn't want to, and two, because I just never know if I'm going to come back to a place, and I might make a base here at some point. Feeling pretty satisfied with the haul we've gotten so far, I decided to stop at this uh, uh, desert temple. I don't actually honestly know why, I just did, because uh, I do stuff. But we do end up scoring a saddle, you know what that means. Alright, so we got ourselves a saddle. Uh, and I think I want to come back here and, with our brush, because I forgot my excavation brush, and dig out some of these temples and try to find the templates and all that whatnot that's in them. Uh, but for right now, I think I want to go snatch a camel and uh, see if I can't get one home. Then I'll come back another day and get a second one so we can make baby camels, and we'll excavate these sites and see if we can't get sherds and... God, that's such a stupid name. Sherds and... Uh, do 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 uh smithing uh, templates we get our first camo look at him smiling right there but uh as we throw the saddle on him and we get ready to roll out we start thinking like we have to go back uh like four thousand more blocks uh i need to make it worth it so uh yeah we're gonna get all these kitty variants that we don't have and we're gonna bring them home All right, so we're really far from home, and uh, we want to bring this camel boy back. Uh, I don't know where he went. He's around here somewhere. Uh, and we also got some new kitties. Now, I was just going to head on home, but the, our little kitty friend here, when we went to bed, he brought us a feather, and I already had copper. So we made ourselves a brush, and we're going to excavate that well and uh, take a crack at that temple. I'm not exactly sure where the hidden room is, but we're going to see if we can find it. And there's our camel boy. All right, a new shirt. That's pretty cool. That desert well only had one piece of suspicious sand. I don't know if that's normal or not. It kind of seems like it should have at least two. But we take a crack at this temple. Um, I've never done this before, but just find the sand in one of the corners, and that'll be where the hidden room is. Uh, we get a one diamond and just a bunch of shirts. Uh, I'll never get used to saying that. Um, but that's about all that was in here. Uh, we got some decent loot from the uh, the bottom of the temple, but that was about it. Really, Camel? I, I left you for like like two minutes, bro. And we get our Camel Boy out, and we're ready to go home with our army of kitty cats. We get our boots headed towards home. Imagine if you saw somebody doing this in real life. Like, your brain would explode. Like, it wouldn't be able to comprehend. Like, wh what? 5,000 blocks, and we're back home. With a Camel, tons of loot and an army of kitty cats. Uh, we gotta go find you a friend. I want some baby camels. You're cute too, but that's one baby ones. Don't get all jealous. Oh, well, that was a pretty successful little adventure. Uh, you know, I never thought traveling back 5,000 blocks with a camel was going to be fun, but it actually was. Um, I spent a lot of the time just traveling over the um, uh, the treetops on a camel. 
with with what bunch of kitties following me. That sounds so stupid, but it was awesome. Anyways, let's check out what we got. I'm not going to go over it all, but we did get a almost a double chest full of mud. Um, some terracotta, which we're going to go back there with our beacon because that was going slow. I started to do it, and I was like, no. Um, we got a decent amount of sand, but then we almost broke our spoon. So, that yeah, I didn't want to do that because it's a really good spoon. Uh, now, as far as, like, valuables, um, this is what I consider to be valuable. Yeah, I got weird ideas of what's valuable. Um, most important out of all this is all these hay bales. All this added up will allow us to make about 2,500 mud brick, which is pretty legit. Pretty legit. Um, we also did one uh, uh, buried treasure. Um, got some uh, dune armor trims. Got some sherds. Man, I'm never going to get used to that name. Um, some more decoration blocks that we stole from village. And just, you know, a bunch of other random stuff. Um, I try to get the crying obsidian anytime I see it, because it's, it's far and few in between. But yeah, um, I think I want to get our camel boy a friend. Uh, I'll, I'll do it super quick, so uh, I don't bore you guys with a long journey since we just came back from one. But back on chapter two, no, chapter three. Uh, we blew up a desert, and there has got to be a uh, a village near it, because it wasn't very far away. So I'm going to go see if I can't get one more camel, boy. Now I set off to uh, get a second camel, and what did your uh, your boy's dumb dumb brain forget? The saddle. Oh my gosh, I'm stupid. Um, now luckily I had uh, four stacks of emeralds in my super adventure box, uh, so I started trading with a villager to get to him to uh, just sell me a saddle. Because none of the local areas uh, had any uh, treasure loot that was going to give me one. And while we were waiting for the trade to reset, we went ahead and got some coral. And this greedy guy just keeps taking all my emeralds. It, it, yeah, it, like four stacks of them. But we don't need the emeralds anyways. We got an infinite supply. Well, yeah, not infinite, but more than we're ever going to need. And finally, he got us a saddle. We actually bought several, and uh, I was actually smart and put some in the ender chest in my adventure box this time. So this doesn't happen again, because uh, you know I'm stupid and it's gonna. Hey, buddy, I brought you a friend. You guys want to make a baby? I'll go get you some cactus, set the mood. Oh, yeah? Okay. Now, I've never actually gotten camels in a world yet, so I'm pretty sure you just feed them cactus? Uh, oh, there he is. Oh, that's freaking adorable. I, I need names. I need names for these dudes. Yeah, I know I got sidetracked big time, but worth it. A hundred percent worth it. They look like they're smiling. Oh. Okay, 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 I'm done with the animals. It's time to build. Now, we wanted to have a record of our uh, our surrounding areas before we start this build, because this build's going to be a big one. And uh, my brain might melt a little bit while I'm doing it, honestly. It's going to be that big, at least for me. I'm used to building smaller, uh, quainter little buildings and just kind of cramming them all together. But either way, I'm excited for it. Um, but yeah, we're going to lock these maps uh, in some glass panes so they don't ever change. So we kind of have a record of our progress. Uh, as we sit on day 477, now a lot of those days were uh, us just getting our uh, inventory sorted from that massive uh, grind we did last chapter. But my style, my style is a little bit goofy. Uh, I combined uh, a lot of different things. I don't like to be stuck in one genre. There's uh, some uh, medieval influence, there's some fantasy, uh, a good amount of Japanese influence. I even took some inspiration from... Uh, some Romanian castles, uh, just from the shaping anyways. But um, let's do this build, and I'll get back to you here shortly.
my fam my peoples uh we are already over 100 days into this episode uh significantly over uh but i am far from done but i do need a little brain break uh, i want to go fight a few things uh clear my head and just uh, get ready to finish this bad boy up but let me show you some of the highlights of what we've done this i present to you a big open area yeah yeah i know i know just just, hold, just bear with me Okay, so I was originally going to have this like Battlements, and it still is. Uh, I had actually uh, built two ballistas up here, and I decided did not like them. They had to go. Um, but I am going to figure out how to make this uh, like a staging area, like uh, someone's attacking from the ocean side over here. Uh, and it's going to look pretty cool when I'm done. I'm still working on it, though. And those two towers there are just straight cobblestone right now, or deep slate cobble. Uh, that's all going to be changed. That's just to frame it out. Up here, I want to put a crane. And I'm going to have it going, uh, pointed over this way, I think. And uh, this is all going to be lowered, by the way. And uh, like it's picking up materials to bring up to build the castle. And over here, uh, don't pay attention to this shape. That was just an early, uh, an early idea. What uh, we're actually thinking is more square, multiple squares put together type of thing. Um, leaning pretty hard into the Japanese theme on this one. Uh, maybe a little co combination of that and something else. I'm not really sure. Uh, but this is going to be like our palace area. Uh, and it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to tie in all here. And then it will shape out the whole castle. And down here. I don't know what's going to go there. There's going to be some type of shop. Probably going into the ground. Or into the wall I should say. Um, but that's for a little bit later. Right there, going to be a blacksmith. 100%, that's going to be a blacksmith. Um, also, not sure here. Something's going to go here. And it's going to look cool. That's all I'm going to say. That up there, though, 100% going to be a library. That's going to house all our uh, our awesome uh, book vendors. And here in the land of kitty cats, uh, we finished the outsides of the wall um, besides the decoration. It's like It's pretty bland right now, but it won't be. Um, and we just kind of like shaped out the rest of the walls, um, but good progress there too. And, you know, looking at this, it doesn't seem like I would spend, uh, you know, 70 days on this, but you got to remember, I don't use light Matica and I plan nothing ahead or very little. I have a rough idea of what I want to do and I just do it. So this is all just spazzed out of my brain. Like, what, why, wait, why is this here? That's not supposed to be here. But anyways, I'm going to go fight some things over by our quarry. Um, just continue lighting the caves, and hopefully I find a good battle, because I need one. And then we're going to come back, and we're going to finish this. And uh, I want to do some more work down around the castle, too, but we're going to see how it works out. Now, we were only really looking to get in a few fights and find a bunch of copper and coal. But this actually ended up being a, a pretty lucky little uh, adventure. We immediately find this spawner um, in the most convenient of places if I would have found it earlier. All right, dude. So we're right outside our quarry. And we decided to jump over here and uh, start lighting things up. Because there's got to be some big caves down here. And we just came right down from the surface. And what did we find? Why couldn't I have found this earlier? This would have been so useful for bows and potions. That uh, is what it is. We have one of these over at our, uh, we have one of these over at our quarry that I think will look much more uh, eye appealing. Um, so we're probably going to use that one, but it's here if we need it. 
after our spider spawner, we just started just running through the caves, just lighting things up. And we didn't have the best of luck. We found a mine shaft, and I was hoping to find a uh, cave spider spawner, but we did not. Um, it is what it is, but we did find this zombie spawner right here. Ironically enough, it uh, we checked our uh, screenshot from our skeleton spawner, and it's not that far from it. It's like 50 blocks away. Maybe 100, 50, 50, 100. I don't know. It, it's It's pretty close. Finally finding a decent fight we were looking for. We we, we found a pretty decent cave. And uh, an angry uh, ankle biter uh, gets really, really mad at us. Now, let me tell you, I actually have toddlers. Um, and uh, this isn't all that far-fetched of how they act. Yeah, yeah that, that seems about right. Yep. Yep, yep. No, no. I want a yogurt, Daddy. I want a yogurt. No. We put him in timeout for a while for hitting, and uh, we finally enjoy our little therapy here. And this really is therapy for me, honestly. It, it, it's my mellow time. It's my chilling. Um, it, not just uh, fighting mobs, but just uh, Minecraft in general. Although fighting mobs is my uh, my mindless therapy. I just kind of just do it. I don't have to think too much. It, it It's really, really nice, though. Yeah. All right, that was a pretty successful little uh, just uh, brain break, just mobbing and cave proofing. Um, something occurred to me while I was doing it, though. All this time, if I would have set up a collection system for them slimes, uh, I would have been getting slime balls. Yeah, that's eh, a lot of wasted slime. But we do need to come back to this cave and finish lighting it up. I'm going to mark these coordinates. <laughs> All right, we cleared our head with a little bit of uh, decent mobbing. Um, that's that's what I like to do when I'm not really uh, feeling building, honestly. Um, and we went ahead and decided to uh, make a little kill chamber in our uh, slime spawner. Now, this is not an effective slime spawner. It will be, I promise you that, once I've uh, hit uh, mob zero with the, uh, uh, the proofing around here. The most effective one is in the swamp, so go do that if you want rates. I did this for aesthetic reasons, and I also did it because it's fun to me. I like fun stuff, you know. But as I was doing this, uh, I did have a couple of ideas. Um, well, um, not only just about the castle over there, but I don't want this thing just to be round anymore. I want it to be more of a sphere, or a cylinder, or a combination of those two. A, a, a sphere is lender? Sphere's lender? You know what? This is America, and I'm calling it a word. You know, I can do that, because that's how we do with English. And I want it to be like a uh, uh, an excavated city. Uh, I want to say dwarven, but, but that just doesn't make sense in Minecraft. Um, but something like that. Anyways, let's go build some uh, castle stuff. Now, in Chapter 2, when we went, and, uh, went down to that uh, lush cave right there, that sucked. Oh my gosh, it sucked. It was useless. Um, we took a look at our, our future quarry, and all of it was was just flat at the time. There was no hole. And uh, now I want you guys to uh, look at it, because I said I was going to come back here and look at it um, once I started working on it. And I will once it's done, too. Now, take a peek at that, and uh, you can see the, the, the big hole we dug. Now, imagine like an excavation site above it, uh, some buildings, uh, just pathways going all the way down. Are you starting to see my ADHD vision now? Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's organized chaos, guys. Organized chaos. Ah, let's go.
So in the middle of recording, uh, my power went out, and I lost a fair amount of footage, as well as having another technical issue. Um, yeah, I went to log back in after the, 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 the power outage, and this happened. All my st statistics got deleted. All of them. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's just annoying. But... The good news is, is I, you know, I went to reading about it, and most people who have that happen uh, literally just have their world deleted or corrupted. I don't think that happened to us. Everything seems to be fine. Um, our villagers over there still count as uh, us curing them. We still have our levels. Everything I've built still seems to be around. Uh, I am a little worried that it might have messed with the end. I don't know yet, but we'll find out later. I just want to let you guys know that uh, that, that stupid crap happened. Uh, yeah, it, it was awesome. Sitting at the tippy top of our kingdom here, uh, we're sitting almost on day 600. We got about four days left. And uh, so this isn't a 100 day episode, it's more like a 200 day episode. But whatever, it's been fun. Um, I'm loving the castle, I really am. Uh, still tons of details that still need to be done. I'm gonna use some glow lichen to uh, shade in a bunch of bits that just don't make sense. Uh, trap doors for the same things to section off areas to make them blend. Uh, fences, you know, uh, awnings, things like that. But our shapes are good. I'm, I'm, well, for me, they're good. I mean, there's other people that probably gonna do better, but whatever. It's, it's my world. Yeah. Now we do have a couple little things I want to get done before I call this an episode. Uh, we want to go goof off with some animals and uh, get our mess over there uh, of just random pens and bees laying on the ground and villagers in dirt huts gone. But real quickly before I do that, I want to show you back here. Now, I terraformed this. You guys all saw it. Um, now, I stopped right there, not only because there's a, a, a hole in the ground, but I want that hole there. And I want to come through, and I want a TNT, a line coming from there over around there. That's already probably a deep cave. We'll probably close some of that in. Around here to the river. And I want a TNT at all, and I want to fill this in with more river. And I want to turn our peninsula into an actual island. And then, of course, we'll have bridges going over to different portions. But I want to wall off and make this a massive port city. You know, a big gatehouse right there. It's going to be really cool. But uh, let's go uh, play around with some animals and uh, finish off this episode with some fun stuffs. So we start the time-consuming task of uh, moving all these dang animals around. And I'm glad I have leads, because otherwise this would be really annoying. Um, but yeah, we're trying to get that area ready for the next builds. Um, we go ahead and just, uh, fancy up our, uh, barn just a little bit. Um, yeah, making it just a little more pretty. And we give our camels just a temporary place to live. They're going to have their own thing at some point. But for right now, this is where they are. We build our chickens a, a beautiful mansion. Just kidding. We put them in a hole as we do with many things. All right. So we moved our chickens. And the reason we put them right here... Uh, in this little hole is right now I just need all their eggs. I'm going to breed them up in here. I need many, many shulkers of eggs because I want to go and get a ton of wither roses and breeding chickens and letting them grow up and letting the wither blow them up is the best way to get them. So that's what we're doing here. Now, the reason we put it here is I, it, it does not look good, of course. Um, I'm going to flatten a little bit of this out and I want a chicken coop and a farmhouse to go right here. Yeah, yeah. Just just a decorative farmhouse. Um, I might make an underground farm for uh, wheat uh, with some villagers, but it's definitely going to be a farmhouse right here with a little chicken coop. Moving on to our piggies, we start wondering, why does the rain never stop in this world? Like, is this normal? I don't know. It's, it's annoying, though. And we just made a little basic little pin for our piggies because uh, we needed them moved. Um... I actually might make this a lot, lot cooler. I just threw this up really quick just to store them. Um, but if I raise this up just a little bit, make a little bigger area, make a little play uh, area with mud, um, I, I could make this a, a an actual little pig pen here. And the reason I kind of wanted the pig pen maybe next to the castle is anytime you watch a movie or something that involves a kingdom, there's always a roasted pig on a table that people are eating. Like That's like the main thing. It's got like an apple in its mouth. Uh, what not. Uh, so we might do that. I don't know. But right now, they're just going to sit here. I call this cinematic masterpiece uh, Oopsie Times. Uh, I accidentally killed all my sheep. Uh, there's some right there. 
I was just thinning them out and just, yep, murdered them all. Turns out it really didn't matter all that much, because where we went to build our pasture and our uh, shepherd's house, uh, there was plenty of sheep already around. So we went ahead and just stuck some in a pen. We go to relocate our bees, and there's just mobs protecting it. Uh, we clear them out and uh, start cleaning up, because we have big plans to build here next uh, next chapter. Um, I don't know where we're going to put these bees. They're, they're definitely going to get a greenhouse somewhere. I haven't decided where yet. we got plenty of honeycomb, but we do need honey bottles now. Relocating our sniffers. We don't really know where these guys are going to go. Um, but one thing is for sure. Trying to lead these guys is like trying to pull a dump truck with a fishing string. It, they just break it nonstop. All right, fam. Well, we're on day 601. And, man, this has been a big one. Like, yes, it has. And I, I still got to go right into the next one and just start grinding again. But, you know, that's kind of the fun of the game. Uh, the only thing we didn't get done that we really wanted to is those dirt huts there now i'm going to build it in here for sure uh but i want two sets of uh clerics they're gonna be my bartenders um two of them are going to be in the inn and our old storage room down there i'm going to convert it to like a little ship side bar uh you know people coming in on boats uh, you know when they want to go look at a little sip sip um a little snack um so that's where they're going to go but i need them to get eaten by a zombie first because they're too expensive right now so, uh, yep, yeah, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and just let that happen and then uh, cure them and then bring them down there. But for right now, uh, this, is, this is the end of this episode. And, uh, man, I really hope somebody had fun. I had a blast. Um, it, this is going to be a fairly long one, I think. And if you made it to the end of this, uh, shout it out. Shout it out that you made it to the end. So I'm going to put your name on like a... Uh, a plaque somewhere dang like uh you've survived uh listening to my stupid voice for for, for however long while i'm building dumb crap it's worth a it's worth a, a shout out anyways uh i hope you all have a lovely day and uh i really mean that and i appreciate it and i'll see you in the next one bye dudes well welcome back we're sitting at 600 plus days in uh last chapter we uh we rose a kingdom up, um, and we now need to do a lot of details. Uh, we have interiors to do. We have other buildings to build. We have things to fight. We have uh, just uh, areas to connect to other areas. Um, we got farms to do. We have a lot to do this episode. But I had a blast in the last one, and I actually have a little special celebration I want to get done uh, here just a little bit. Now, as I'm setting this up, we had just hit 100 subscribers, and I just wanted to say thank you all so much. I am so glad that somebody out there is enjoying this. Now, uh, we're going to set up a little celebration here on this big open area that uh, I totally trusted in the random gods to be useful later. And guess what? It was. Yeah, I, I, just, I just knew it. All right, so we're sitting here on day 615. We took many, many days to uh, sort through all our shulkers from last uh, episode, about 18 of them that were full. Uh, but that's all done, and we had a little firework display to, you know, to celebrate a little bit. I thought it came out pretty cool. We're sitting here next to our doggy, just kind of figuring out what we're going to do on this one. And uh, I think I know, honestly. I want to interconnect the quarry over to here. I want to uh, finish up everything we left undone on the castle. Uh, I'll do that probably pretty quick, because it's just going to be a lot of details really quick. Uh, there's no interiors right now, um, and things like that, and I just wanted to zip through them and just make everything pretty. And then on top of that, um, we got a couple farms we want to get done, and a bunch of buildings around the castle that we want to get done. Um, big one is uh, bees. You know me and bees. I love my bees. But right now, more importantly, I need their honey, because I want to utilize villagers, um to where they're functional, but don't run away and get themselves killed non-stop. And that's why I need honey blocks. And then also, we have a lot of diamonds, so we can duplicate templates. Uh, which means I want to get rid of this, uh, let's be honest, ugly blue diamond armor, and I want to go netherite mining. 
And you know we're not doing that with a pick. We are blowing that up. But it also means I need to go fight a Bastion. And I'm just going to be perfectly honest with you. There's not many things in this game that actually uh, worry me. Piglin Brutes do. They, they do. They have killed me more times in this game than anything else. But, uh, yeah, anyways, we're going to get after it. Um, but before we do all the things I just said, we need to go feed some villagers to zombies. Let's go. Setting our villagers up to get numb numbed by some zombies, I'm excited about this for two reasons. One reason, because of all the cool stuff they're going to give us for cheap. But more importantly, the fact that this is the last eyesore we had over here. The last temporary setup. Which means this canvas over here is ready to build, and that's where I want to put my in. So we get these guys a cure in, and I don't know if it's just me, but the, uh, the zombie a sound whenever you hit him with the golden apple is extremely satisfying to me. That just sounds good to my ears. We head down to the docks uh, so we can remodel our old storage room into our villagers' new forever home. Now, we always knew we were going to repurpose this building. Originally, uh, I was thinking that it would be repurposed into like a fisherman's hut, but it just doesn't really fit the way it's uh, kind of caved out. So we were going to make it a little dockside bar, and I think that's going to work really good. Oh, by the way, did you know your boy actually does do interiors? I really haven't had time to do them here, um, but I do do them. Uh, now that I have my boxes set up with all kinds of decorations, they'll, they'll be cracking. Uh, and we, we boat these little guys into their new home. Now, I don't have honey blocks to keep them uh, held in place behind the bar yet, so they're just going to have to sit in boats uh, until I do. All right, so that's about all we can do with this one until we get these uh, these guys secured over here. Uh, but, yeah, it's coming pretty cool. I'll probably put some paintings up in a little bit. I still got to uh, finish making my other decoration box. I'm missing about half the stuff I like to use. But, yeah, I'm, I'm calling this one done for right now. Uh, come back into a little bit later, uh, probably off camera, but whatever. And I think I might like extend this out a little bit and make a little seating area. But uh, we have to get on to other things now. I still want to do a couple more little finishes on some builds we kind of neglected in the past because we moved on to bigger things. Um, we're going to try to do them really quick, though, because we got a lot of stuff to do on this episode. Uh, we're going to put our nether wart farm right here in just a minute. And... We need to do the interior and the rest of the decorations on our uh, iron farm. Whipping together a quick little nether wart farm. I didn't really want it to be all that big. I don't use a lot of nether wart, um, but I did want some, and it's mostly here for decoration. Uh, speaking of decoration, we decided we need to finish our toolboxes. We took ourselves just a little bit to uh, upgrade our decoration boxes. This one here is mostly job sites and bigger blocks. And this was here, all our littler details. Um, we're still missing a bunch of stuff, but it's a pretty big upgrade, honestly. Um, I actually uh, uh, bred a couple villagers and made uh, a couple cartographers, and neither of them gave me item frames, and I'm pretty sure they had a chance to. But the shepherd did give us paintings. So we're just going to give up on that for now, and we're just going to breed cows. Um, but I'm not going to show that because that's boring. Let's go build stuff. Now on to our Iron Golem farm. Uh, this uh, security camera angle footage is about the best I could come up with, but I still wanted to show it because it's just a quick little, uh, I don't know, quaint, uh, cramped build. Came out okay. Setting off on our next task of uh, digging this long, long uh, path all the way to the quarry. Um, there's going to be a fair amount of uh, time lapses in this episode. I'm just going to fair warn you now. Hopefully they look cool because uh, we have so much to do that... Well, there's just going to be a lot of time lapses. But I will try to limit it as much as possible and fill it in with some really, really cool stuff as well. Now, this path is really, really important to me. Um, one, I like paths. Uh, two, uh, it interconnects our quarry to our main city. And three, it gives us our ideas of where we want to branch this path off to uh, other buildings or uh, sites, whatever we're going to do. And then something cool is going to go right here.
We built ourselves a path, a gatehouse, a bridge that we might change a few details on. I don't really know if I really like the deep slate right there. And we also built uh, our slime farm to where it's functional and collects everything. Now, I'm not going to bore you and talk about this uh, big hole again because I've done it several times. All I'm going to say is I've decided what it's going to be. And it is going to be a steampunk city. Absolutely. It's going to be awesome. Just, just trust me. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but we did kind of get a little temporary platform set up as well as, uh, you know, just a couple of little things. But right now, I need a brain break. Uh, much like my toddler in real life, um, I need a brain break. And also much like him, I'm going to use that brain break to go destroy things in the nether. Yep, I'm going to go blow it up. Let's do that. We start getting ourselves set up. Uh, make some fire resistance potions. Now, I honestly usually don't do this. Uh, I don't know why I did this time. But holy cow, does it save our life and the series. Uh, we AFK our creeper farm up in our hot air balloon for a little bit, just so you know we have enough supplies to make things go kaboom, kaboom, boom, boom. Um, we were low on sand, though, so we could only make about five stacks. But we'll make it work. So we fly off under the nether, and uh, we're looking for anywhere low to the ground uh, with lots of land that's not a basalt delta. And we did find another waste, uh, and we chose poorly. Uh, there's just lava lakes all around this thing, and uh, I didn't think there was going to be. We set up our first row of kabooms and uh, light them up. And right away, we see our first score of... Oh, and that's our first ancient debris. Yes, yes. Is there any more? And as with every nether adventure, a nosy pigman uh, just has to get involved. Like, every time. Like, you can't do anything in the nether without these guys just it, causing trouble. Like, chill out, bro. And then our explosions uh, made some uh, zombified pigmen mad, too. You know, I still call them pigmans. Yeah, I, I miss the pigmans. Yeah, so anyways, we travel along. Uh, we do find some uh, debris just naturally mining uh, for our uh, explosion shafts. But we do get some pretty good luck from our explosions. Um, I can't complain too much, honestly. Really, uh, netherite is one of the few things that uh, you can still get excited about mining and finding in this game anymore. I mean, it, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. I, I get more excited about building stuff. But here's a little tip if you guys didn't know this. Um, if you hit F3 and G, it'll show the chunk borders. Um, this is only in Java, I believe. I don't think it works in Bedrock. Uh, and uh, Ancient Debris has a very, very high chance to spawn on the chunk borders. So if you locate a chunk border and dig along it, you are more likely to find Ancient Debris. Hope that helps somebody. Definitely helped me in this run. Now this little bit here truly showcases how stupid your dude is. Now you just watch this. This is, this is really dumb. Now I know there's lava there. I just dug it and uh, filled it back in. Now watch what I do, because I am really, really smart. The same block, and it almost kills me if I didn't have this fire resist potion. Literally, the same block. How stupid. Using up our last bit of TNT, our last explosion was actually a really lucky one. I think we got six right here. So, you know, we gather them up and uh, we get prepared to head on home. But there is a problem with heading home. Remember them lava lakes I was telling you about? Check this out. Okay, everywhere. Everywhere you look. Lava lake. Every direction. I have tried so many different ways. We do eventually navigate through it, though, and uh, we make it out. 
and the lovely side of our base uh, is just wonderful. Alright, so we made it back to our nether hub, and we have 34 ancient debris. Um, I wanted more, because that really only equals 8 pieces of gear. But, it's not too bad. Um, we burnt through, uh, you know, 5 full stacks of TNT, but it is what it is. And we got some other good stuff too, because we really needed a lot of this quartz. Anyways, well, let's get back home. Alright, so we have our netherite, and we need to go fight bastions for our template. Um, but first, I want to make sure our gear is actually going to be enchantable enough to get maxed um, before we head out. Let me show you what I mean. So, when we were trying to get glass to build our uh, slime farm, we did get a couple more um, villagers. And this guy here, he was a superstar. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, again. And that one's just kind of okay. But this right here, I want to put this on all three pieces of my armor. Uh, a lot of people will say that it's it's not the best enchantment. I disagree. The only downside of it is that it damages your armor. But when you have mending and netherite, you will never break your armor. It will never, ever happen. So it could passively save our life. The thing is, though, it's very expensive. Not emerald-wise, to actually enchant it. So let's go check these uh, armor pieces and see if we can hit max level or max enchantments um, before we head out. Now our helmet, it literally just needs uh, thorns and it has everything I could possibly want. Now the boots looks like they're going to be doable. We are going to go trade a bunch of gold to some piglins to see if we can't get soul speed. That would be the last thing I want to get on them. Now as far as these pants, how much is this actually going to cost us? Alright, so this is a win too, I think. Um, I do believe we'll have enough uh, experience room to uh, put uh, soul speed on these. And I think we'll have enough room to get a uh, uh, swift sneak on these when we go to an ancient city, which is probably going to be next episode, next chapter. Um, as long as it doesn't give us the really annoying message of, it's too expensive. Which makes no sense, because you can get hundreds and thousands of levels in this game. How is it too expensive? Setting up to capture some piglins so we can trade them for soul speed books, um, we uh, learned some lessons. Uh, that's one thing about Minecraft, there's always something new to learn. Okay, I learned a lesson there. Apparently, uh, opening your own ender chest uh, makes the piglins mad. Okay, let's go find another one. All right, so we got two Soul Speed 2 books, but I think that's going to be too expensive. We're still going to keep trading for a little bit. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. Well, that's all our gold. We saw the gold we brought with us. Um, we did get some two, like three Soul Speed 2 books. Maybe we can combine them up. Maybe it won't be too expensive. And eh, let's find out. Either way, we got to go back home. Oh no, though, we did get some decent loot. Um, enough leather to make 49 item frames. That's just a, a win. Um, you know, a bit of string, a bit, a bit of other stuff. Uh, and this is the real win right here. All this acquiring obsidian. Uh, honestly, even without the Soul Speed 3 book, that was worth it. But let's go uh, combine these up and see if it's gonna, even going to be viable to max this guy out. All right, so we do have the levels now, um, at least for the first enchantment, and thorns is going to be more important to us than the soul speed. The soul speed was just for funsies. Uh, so we're going to do the thorns first and then see if we have enough to make the ultimate max footwear. And it's doable. We just need to grab 20 levels, which with our villagers, pretty easy. I present to you all the absolute perfect booties and hat. Like, literally, they cannot get any better. That is everything. We just need to slap some netherite on these bad boys. Uh, and that means going to fight Piglin Brutes. Yeah, that that's going to be fun, he said sarcastically. Ugh, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Look at our frog-like farm just a-working. 
Anyways, let's go fight some scary pigs. We need another right template. Well, there's our first bastion, and uh, I can always see Brutes already down there just uh, plotting our death. How do we want to attack this thing? So, Operation Scaredy Cat Idiot is a go. We try and snipe as many of them from distance as we can, um, just kind of stealthing our way in. Just, you know, ninja presence. I was never here. Making sure just to reduce the threat level as much as possible. This is really the only good, uh, even slightly good way of attacking this section. Um, there really was no other way in unless I went in from the bottom, and I did not want to do that. Oh, we got it first try. Yes, I I'm getting out of here. Uh, we have our templates, but I see all these chests here now, and I really want to go check them out. Uh, but I also don't want to die. This thing is set up in just a really stupid area. Like, it, it, there's no good way to attack it. Maybe from the bottom up to the top. Eh, I'm going to go peek these chests. But we do decide to risk it one more time. Um, yeah, at this point, there really wasn't anything in this bastion that was really important enough to risk our world and our life. Um, but it seemed fairly safe, and we had a little uh, boat safety net set up, too, that we could uh, get them stuck in if uh, they just sporadically sprung from a wall or something. Oh my gosh, brutes are annoying. They just come out of the stupidest places, and I hate them so much. I truly mean that. I hate them. I hate them. They look cool, though. I'll, I'll give them that. Uh, yeah, they got some presents. They look cool. Oh, that's two more ancient debris. I'll get us up to nine pieces of armor or gear. Yeah, I did not like that one. It had it had no escape route, but it did give us exactly what we needed. With eight netherite to our name, we uh, get all our tools and uh, gear ready to be uh, maxed out. Oh yes, it's going to be beautiful. Um, so we go ahead and just get some books here to uh, max out our axe, so we can use up all eight ingots. And I think this occasion uh, warrants a uh, musical anthem. Here you go. Oh, we are kitted. Oh, that's looking good. Ironically enough, it, this is literally day 700, exactly. Yeah, 700. A little, little milestone. Oh, yes. That was 100% worth it. And now back to the building. Let's go. Checking more things off our list, we uh, make a little home for our bee friends. Man, you know I love my bees. I believe this is uh, called an apiary? I think that's what it's called, but I wanted this uh, little honey farm to be as compact as I possibly can, because I normally put this in a bigger structure, and I did not want to do this. I want to do different things, you know? So we just kind of make a little, uh, little smoking beehive here, and just decorate it up a little bit. And this little section here, I like to call just uh, spreading love, all the little details that we just didn't do before. On uh, current builds and builds we did in previous episodes, so a little flower garden and little uh, beehive area outside here, I thought it came out pretty cool. And we move on to the wall. These walls were, I loved the shape of them, but they had no detail whatsoever. They were just flat one material, so we had to change that. We'll get to the very top a little bit later, because we got to revamp that bastion up there. And then the long-neglected pumpkin field. This was well, well overdue. But we did it. All right, my peoples, uh, we're going to get back to uh, making things pretty in just a minute. Um, but I'm feeling a little cheated by that bastion we found. It, it was so cramped and it sucked, and I didn't get the fight I was looking for. 
Uh, so we're going to go see if we can't find another one real quick. Um, and hopefully it has a treasure room because uh, I want a potential magma farm uh, later on. And maybe even that snout armor trim. And then we will pretty much have everything we need from, uh, from a bastion. But yeah, let's go, let's go dive in. Let's go blitz this thing. All right, now this one looks more promising. Oh, yeah. So we go ahead and just start building up to our bastion here. And uh, looking for these piggies who uh, we want to go give a hug and a handshake and say hi to. No, just kidding. They're going to try to murder us, and we're going to murder them back. And uh, that's what we get to doing. And, of course, because we're stupid, uh, like we always are, we attack some uh, pigmen as well. Piglin? Zombie piglin? Pigmen? Ah, whatever. You get it. And they try to murder me right away. Now, this is the very beginning of the Bastion, and uh, I was about one shot from being dead. But we got our revenge. Now, this right here is interesting. I did not know this about these guys, because I usually fight them on, like, level ground. But these dudes will just kamikaze off of anything. They, like, the AI checks no pathing. Like, watch. Look, this, he's like, hey, what's up? Well, actually, I killed that one. But watch this next one. Literally jumps to his death all the way to the bottom. Yeah, they're they're smart, but they are also evil. They do have a lot of swagger though. They look pretty cool. I'm gonna be honest. So we break our way in from the top because that's how I like to do it and just work my way down, just sniping them off as we go. Now nearing the bottom, we just keep on sniping them off. Now you might be wondering, dude, why are you not wearing a chest plate? This wouldn't be so bad. Well, first of all, yes, it would. These guys still suck with a chest plate. And two, I think I mentioned before, I don't really take my elytra off once I get it. Very few situations. Um, oh, look at that snipe. That was good. Um, and you pretty much the only time I do that if I'm trying to glitch TNT to blow up bedrock. But look right here. Uh, this guy drops his head, and we're going to risk it for that. Oh, yeah, we're going down there. Piglin Brute Head, that's a trophy. Now, here we actually make it to the bottom, and we're pretty sure we got all them brutes. We're not really worried about the regular pigmen. It's just the brutes. And now that we got the bastion pretty much secured, we start uh, just laying down a floor and fighting hordes and hordes of magma cubes. Now, I will say that I built a lot of farms, but this one here I'm actually excited to do because I've never done it before. I also have not watched any tutorials whatsoever. I'm just going to use the knowledge I've used in other farms to see what I can make happen. But I think I'm probably going to use Iron Golems as kill mechanisms, at least until I get Wither Roses. But that's what we're planning on doing. It's finally time to check the loot, and lame. Lame again. Possibly the lamest. So we could still try for that one, but that's more of a death trap than that one was. But you know what? We're already in it, we're going to do it. So we head on in, and uh, we're feeling pretty confident. You know, we just took on pretty much an entire bastion, and we only just almost died just a little bit. You know, nothing too crazy. And we see this one piglin, this brute, and we say, oh, yes, we can take on one brute. He'll be dead before he even gets to us. But this brute had an entourage, a large entourage, and they start chasing us like we're rock stars. Except, uh, you know, trying to give us praise and, uh, you know, take photographs. They want to murder us. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there was a few of them. There, there was a few. All right, that was, that was kind of close. Um, you know what? We're going to finish this. But I have a plan. I'm going to run home real quick. Snagging some TNT from home. Uh, we started off by almost lighting it on fire and blowing ourselves up because we're super, super good because we got our bow in our offhand like an idiot. Uh, but, you know, it's all part of my charm because I, I like being an idiot. It, you know, ignorance is bliss. It's wonderful. Anyways, we blow up the bastion, or at least to where we can open it up and see what's up there and not get trapped in a corridor. Oh, uh, we got both of them. Oh, uh, worth it. 100% worth it. Eh, uh, let's get out of here before we press our luck. My dudes, did I ever tell you that I hate brutes? Oh, but it was so worth it. Let's check this out. Alright, so we went back with some TNT and opened that thing up because them corridors were scary. Uh, they're pretty manageable in the uh, big part of the Bastion, but the, the narrow staircases? There's like six of them that chased after me. Uh, I, I would have died 100% if I would have tried to fight them in that staircase. 
But oh yes, we got another template. Don't really need it, but we got it. But more importantly, we got our snout armor trim. And as a bonus, we got the pattern for the banner. Might even use that. Being that I hate piglins, maybe I'll just make like a banner of piglins, you know, look ironically. Yeah, anyways, uh, let's get back to building stuff. Uh, but that was definitely, definitely worth it. Now, dang it, I said I was going to finish up this castle, okay? I did. So I'm going to get it done. Or, you know, some of it done. Um, like, like 60% of it done. All right. That, I, I keep my promises. S sometimes. Most of the time. Sometimes. Anyways, this is Operation uh, Decor Blitz. Look at our little frog, he's just dancing on their uh, lily pads over there. Man, those frogs are cute. Anyways, uh, we have gotten a crap ton of stuff done on this chapter. Um, it, we still have tons and tons more to do, and it'll always be like that. I don't know why I keep saying it. It's like, you know I'm going to do more stuff. <laughs> I don't think I need to remind you. But my brain's dumb, and I'm still going to. But, oh man, I, I wanted to get through the whole castle, but it's just not possible. Uh, it, it's time to call this one an end, but... Dude, did we get some things done? I want to show you what I didn't do, though. I intentionally didn't do the library. And the reason I didn't is because before I decorate that thing, I need to move all our villagers, plus some more villagers, after curing them with zombies, into there and secure them. Otherwise, I'm just juggling them around, and, and then my life sucks. Yeah, I don't want to do that. And then our uh, starter house, uh, he says jokingly, considering we built that thing on, like, day 600, still needs all its interior. But I kind of started from the front and started working my way back. So we basically did everything up to our uh, battlements up here, or bastion, or I forget what this is called, but whatever. They're part of a castle where like they would seize or uh, have a war siege type of situation. Um, so we still need to do that, and we need to do the back side of the castle. Uh, other than that, we pretty much caught up on everything. Yeah, and uh, we got our little uh, area over there that we're going to build our steampunk city. That is going to be really, really cool. I already have it, like, just planned out in my brain. Wish I could show you guys. I'm going to, but I wish I could show you now. But it's going to take a little bit. Well, well next episode, uh, we, we are going to go tease a warden a little bit. We're going to do tons of building. Um, and who knows what else my spazzy brain is going to come up with. But until then, I do have to call this one, and I hope you guys had an epic time. I did. I had a blast doing this one. Um... Yeah, really nothing in this episode I regret. It's been a good time. 
And uh, I hope you guys have a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, dudes. Welcome back to Chapter 7, you beautiful people. And uh, we are at 750 days. Uh, we've done a bit of uh, grind work already off camera, lots and lots of trees and sorting boxes. Um, but we are not only surviving in our world, but we are thriving. Uh, so much that we can just take some time to play with some frogs. Yeah, just playing with animals because I like to. Uh, now, last chapter, we made a lot of things pretty, and I'm happy with everything we did. Um, we also fought some scary pigs uh, a couple times, actually, and we have almost fully maxed out gear. We only need a couple small pieces. So we're going to get right into this next one. Enjoy. We are sitting on top of our hot airship with like a million things to do this episode. But there is one thing we have to do first, and it is gonna, it's going to be scary. We have to go tease a warden a little bit, because we need Swift Sneak. I'm going to be doing a lot of things that are uh, up high, where I'm going to be building while sneaking, and I'm not going to go around like a snail doing that. I need to move. So, uh, yeah, no long speech this time. Let's get right into it. we got to go get geared up. And, of course, you know I mean we're going to an ancient city, you know, the most joyful place on uh, Minecraft Planet. So we start gathering up as many sheep as we can because we have not set up our auto sheep farm yet. But we are going to. Uh, now, while we're doing this, these guys uh, were growing their wool back very fast. So we started getting the actual place where we want to put the sheep farm just, you know, cleared out. We got ourselves a couple stacks of wool. And let me tell you right now, it was not enough. Uh, but we needed hoes, so we started rolling for them. And it was not cooperating. But luckily, we have villagers right outside for infinite levels, so we just kept trying. Just grinding them off and trying again. We specifically wanted Silk Touch. We needed it because we wanted to collect a bunch of uh, different Skulk blocks. Both for redstone and for decoration. We do finally end up getting it, though. But we still needed a bunch of books, so we went and bought those from the villagers, and uh, we made us uh, some pretty epic hoes. Uh, they're actually max, both of them. Well, besides the netherite. And you know we gotta name them. Now this one here is gonna be for uh, gathering leaves, uh, skulk, um, things like that. Now this one is primarily gonna be used for extra crops, and uh, extra saplings from stubborn trees like uh, dark oak, who often don't give enough to grow another tree back. And you know, we gotta name it too. But we are ready to go. Look at our bees just all working there. Yeah, that thing's actually really productive for how tiny it is. Anyways, that distracted me like everything does. We are ready to go. We are gonna go south. Um, towards the uh, ice mountains that we uh, went to, I believe, on Chapter 1. Because um, if you didn't know that uh, ancient cities, they spawn under large mountains. Uh, various mountains. It's not really that specific, I don't think. There's got to be big mountains. And so we're going to go look for a big open cavern and uh, jump in and see what happens. Hopefully we don't die. Uh, we're going to see. So we fly off looking for a deep dark to, uh, you know, have an anxiety attack in. Just uh, flying over our quarry. Well, it's no longer a quarry. Like I said, it's going to be a steampunk city. It's going to be awesome. I really I enjoyed building that bridge. Um, checking a few caves. Um, it, the first couple weren't really all that promising. This one here looked really cool, but it pretty much went nowhere. This one looks like it goes pretty deep. Eh, I think it's probably our best bet. Now, we're going to be taking this a little cautious. There really is no room for error in this situation. Uh, if we summon the warden, we have to leave. Uh, I don't even think, without our chest plate, we can even survive one sonic blast. Unless eat a golden apple. But we get ourselves a little, uh, little base camp set up, a little escape route in case a uh, dude starts blasting at us. Freaking jerk, just ugh, grumpy. Okay. So we fly on down with the absolute grace of an eagle. We definitely don't hit our head like four times. A little exaggerated. Reverse psychology. I was showing the warden that I'm not scared of pain. Yeah. So where we landed, we couldn't even actually see any chests. So we decided to fly off. Definitely not hitting our head yet again. 
And that decision uh, was our first mistake of this run. Yeah. I think we need to get down to the ground floor. Well, that's two. I am not having fun with this. Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, not what we wanted. Oh, gosh. Now, this little scary roar and the next one coming here in just a second uh, equals our fourth triggers. Uh, luckily, we've been taking it quite slow, so we've had time for a few of those stacks to decay. Um, but I believe this puts us back at three, which means the next one we get, if we don't let it decay a little bit, that's going to be four, and the scary warden is going to spawn. And I don't want him to. I, I don't like him. All right, we got the ward armor trim. Still no book, though. We finally find ourselves an area of this city that's not just covered in sensors and shriekers. And uh, we find some actually pretty decent loot. We got the uh, other side, we got some echo shards, but not what we're looking for. Now, right here, the, uh, the game teases us with uh, Swift Sneak 1 books, two of them. Like, come on. And another armor trim, which you don't need anymore. Yeah, it's going to start getting scary, because this over here counts as old growth. Yeah, I'm pretty sure things can spawn. And I was correct. Things can spawn there. Now, a zombie, not that big of a deal, especially since I'm in a pretty safe area, but I'm very curious. What if a creeper spawns and I aggro him? If he blows up, does that, like, does that trigger a shrieker? I don't know. We might be okay. Well, we've been taking it slow, so I think our stuff is reset. If it triggers, we're just going to blitz again. Those are decent pants. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Oh. Now the hard decision. We still want a silence armor trim. I don't think it's worth it to risk it. Um, I'm going to think for just a second. All right, so we got our swift sneak three. Yeah, and we also got our ward armor trim. We didn't get the silence, but... I think our best bet is to head on home and enchant these pants and then come back another day for the silence uh, armor trim because it, it, it spawns very rarely. And this slow little crouching around is just not going to do it. It's going to take forever to do this city. And I'm also kind of thinking that at some point, uh, assuming that our world goes on for thousands and thousands of days, maybe we come back here and clear it out and uh, do something with it. I don't know. But right now, I just want to get home because, well... I've triggered this dude like six times. Now, luckily, I took it real slow, so some of the uh, levels had time to, uh, what do you call it, decay. But I'm pretty sure I'm on number three right now, which means a trigger will probably spawn a warden. So I'm going to go home. Uh, Where is home? Um... Now listen close here, uh, you'll hear something. I'm pretty sure we trigger the Warden right here. How the crap did we get in here? So, uh, 
Yeah, that was absolutely terrifying. You know, the warden can be manageable, but those ceilings were so low that if the warden didn't kill me, me smacking smacking into a wall with uh, my elytra probably would have. Oh, that is just such a beautiful sight. Oh my gosh. That's all our gear. Well, that's all our armor. Uh, because I'm probably never going to use a chest plate. I might make one at some point just because I'll have levels and books and all that crap just for an emergency situation. But our armor is done. Oh, I can move so much better now. Now, we're going to go back to that ancient city, but I need to get a whole, whole lot more wool. That wool we brought was not enough. And that means setting up a wool farm. Now... I think we're going to do that this episode. I'm not sure yet, but I think that's going to happen. With our sneaky pants on, we set off to build a city. And I'm not talking about the city that's going to be next to the castle. We're taking a break from the castle for this episode, I believe. Um, we still might do that wolf farm. I don't know, but I got distracted big time. And I am taking on a project that's going to take hundreds of days. So uh, bear with me. It's, it's going to be awesome. You just got to trust your boy. Just, just, just trust me. You'll see.
All right, so we're over 20 hours into this project. Oh my gosh, and that doesn't even include the original hole we dug. But uh, the final product's going to be awesome. Uh, it, my goal here is to build an entire city out of all these chunks we dug out. I'm going hard into the steampunk vibe. I've, I've mentioned that before. But real quick, before we have to go uh, do something else, I wanted to show you what I've done already. That over there, that's a lava farm. It produces lava really quickly. That there, that's our dripstone farm. We already have uh, like two stacks of dripstone in there, and that was the last thing I built. And of course, we're sitting on top of our slime farm, which has produced seven stacks of uh, slime blocks already. And that factory over there, and I was kind of doubting that build, uh, but it does look like a factory. And that's what I was going for. That is our bamboo farm. And I'm intentionally not hiding these farms. I want this to look very industrialized. But right now, I need a break, and I don't want to die to a creeper falling on my face. Now, the deeper we go, and uh, the more we build, the more shade that's, uh, you know, from doing overhangs that, that, that there is, the higher chance that, you know, creepers are going to drop on my face. So I'm going to go get some totems. Yeah, let's do that. Gearing up for our journey, we decided we wanted to make a set of super shears, just in case we needed to dig through a bunch of wool at the, uh, at the mansion. Eh, I'll tell you right now, we didn't need them, but we have them if we need them in the future. Uh, we had to hit up our ATM real quick for some levels, and uh, we got these things made. And then, you know, we, we got to name everything. And we go ahead and get our map, and this map was not the luckiest one we could have got. It is stupidly far away. I'm not really sure how they work, honestly. Like, did this give you a random location, or is it the closest location? I don't know. But we check our super adventure box to make sure we got everything we need. Plus, we got an empty shulker to come along with us. And our first distraction. Uh, about 2,000 blocks from home, we find a giant mushroom island. Now, I plan on doing a whole bunch of mud builds, so I needed some of this mushroom. Another thousand blocks, and that dot on the map is still tiny. Uh, but we decided to stop at this outpost just to see what's here. I'm pretty sure there might be an armor trim we can get. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, no armor trim, but we did get a horn. I'm actually not even sure if there's an armor trim that spawns here. I think that might be the worst horn. I'm not sure. And yet again, we get distracted with a shipwreck. Now, this one turns out pretty good. Yeah, I was happy with this one. Taking care of this little drowned dude down here before we check the second chest. And we get not one, but two of the coast armor trims. We didn't have that one yet, so that's a score. And, of course, we gotta check the treasure. Now, this is probably one of the worst treasures I've ever found in the game. Like, literally the only thing in it was the heart of the sea. That, that's all I wanted. And finally seeing that mansion 7,000 blocks later. Let's go fight it. Breaking in through the top floor so we can start working our way down. We are greeted with hospitality with a little zombie dude who wants to num-num us. He doesn't get to, though. And we get the drop on this dude. He doesn't give to summon a Vex. He tries. He tries. But, but no, no luck. Yep, yeah, we got our totem. But I think I want to raid this place. And a looting we go. Does anybody remember when mansions had, like, nothing in them? Just empty rooms and they were useless? I don't remember when that got updated, but it was awesome when it did. Anyways, this bucket is going to come in clutch through this run. Uh, I wish this worked with the piglin brutes in the nether, but at least it works here these guys at bay and the treasure game's on point I already got a couple free diamond hoes and another trim we did not have all right a vex armor trim so we get the mobbing I don't know what it is about mansions like the corridors are, are pretty big and like everything's wide open but things do just tend to spawn out of nowhere or maybe it's just me or maybe it's just you know the fun of the game like this little zombie right here comes up from behind. I'm pretty sure I just looked over there and there was nothing there. But, yeah, whatever. 
So, uh, yeah, we just kind of go on, and I didn't really need anything, really anything from this mansion anymore, but it had been a while since I did one, so I kind of wanted to see what had changed. And this guy doesn't cooperate like his friend did at the beginning. Uh, he gets them vexes off a couple times, and these things can be brutal. They can spawn with uh, enchanted swords with sharpness and do some serious damage. But uh, I'm going to shut up, and I'm just going to fight and, and fight and vibe. Well, I wanted to bring some Olays home, and we released four of them, and they just straight up disappeared. I don't know where they went. Well, we found one of the Olays, uh, and we really only need the one, because we can duplicate them by himself uh, with music and an am amethyst shard. Uh, question is, will he be able to keep up on a lead if we fly? And the answer is no. But it does look like if we don't go too fast, it'll be alright. Eh, this is going to take a while. I'll see you guys in a minute. There you go. You play with that, buddy. I'm, uh, I'm going to be back for you. I got, I got plans. You're, you're going to collect a whole lot of ink. All right, well, we're back with some pretty good stuff. Um, tons of bookcases, uh, lots of mushroom goodies. This uh, horn, it sounds really weird to me. We've got two more templates. We weren't even looking for templates. I actually kind of forgot that these even existed in a mansion. Not going to lie. i got three of them. And now we got to go do a bunch of grinding. Yep. Now, with day 1000 approaching stupidly quick, and us have spent a ridiculous amount of days and real-life hours, so many hours doing this, um, this is going to have to be a two-parter episode. Absolutely. Um, but we're just trying to get all the way down as far as we can uh, past Y0. Um, because we want all the stone gone. Uh, we want nothing but deep slate. Now, as we're doing this, we, we're just thinking up ideas. Now, right here, we discover our spawner. You know, we're going to build a building out of that. Um, we actually converted it over to a um, a skulk farm for a while because we needed it for decoration. 
But some of the ideas we came up with, we want to dig this thing eventually all the way down to probably about Y45, Y50. And then I want to make a custom deep dark down there. Now here we make another awesome discovery. Uh, now, I've mentioned before that I wanted to find um, just various natural things that have spawned um, as we dig, and I wanted to showcase them. I did not want to delete anything that I thought was cool that was already naturally in the game. And we've been looking for a good geode for a while. And we decided we wanted to make ourselves a little custom little water cave because guess what we find? A geode. It's not the biggest, but we can make a farm out of it. And we actually used some of that uh, amethyst to make some uh, tinted glass that we'll use here in just a minute. But right here is a beautiful, beautiful sight because we're finally getting down to the, uh, you know, the deep slate level where only deep slate can spawn. Now, the down downside of that is deep slate's really, really annoying to freaking mine. So I decide uh, that we're going to take care of that a little bit different. Now here, I thought about just draining this whole thing, but there were some cool glow squids that kept spawning in there, and I kind of wanted it to be like a little uh, aquarium for them. Now we're going to enclose this whole thing in, but for right now, this is what we got. Alright, now that deep slate uh, mining was going a bit slow. So we made four stacks of TNT. Nope, five stacks of TNT. Man, I'm good with numbers. Like the best. Uh, we're gonna go blow it up. Well, fam, we uh we broke did uh yeah we we broke did this a little bit, but you know what? I would rather spend fifteen minutes fixing this than uh, hours uh, you know digging everything we blew up. Now oh, there's those creepers I said we're gonna start spawning. Ugh. But we did make it down to in most sections about Y negative seventeen, which was we're only about thirty blocks away from where we want to get. But it's all deep slate, and I am out of explosives. So uh, this is going to be the end of uh, end of part one. Yeah, this is a two-parter, like I said. But we did do some pretty cool stuff. We built some farms. We went to the deep dark. Um, we dug lots and lots of holes. Um, we exposed our little skeleton farm over there. I kind of just decorated it up just a little bit. I still got more to do. Uh, found a geode like right around here, and we're getting close to that uh, spider spawner we found, uh, you know, previous uh, chapters ago. And we're going to expose that and make a little building out of that too. Uh, but yeah, it, next uh, uh, part two, we have to erect an entire city. And like I said, I want to do a custom deep dark at the bottom. So I'm going to have to go get way, way more explosives. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, if you didn't, please let me know. Uh, this took, oh, I don't even know, at least 40 hours of gameplay. And then another probably 20 to edit this thing. And this is just part one. So if you didn't enjoy it, tell me. You won't hurt my feelings. But if you did, give a shout out. Anyways, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. And uh, I'll see you soon. Welcome back to part two of chapter seven, you awesome people. 
Now, we have seriously, seriously put in a grind. We have done a whole, whole lot of things. Lots of farms, lots of builds. Um, done some pretty cool stuff, at least I think I did. And uh, we are far from done, and I mean far, far, far from done. Now, in this one, we are taking on a project that is going to take a ridiculous amount of time. Now, luckily, last episode, we put in a lot of grind work. Now, we want to build a city out of this huge, huge hole. And, well, you guessed it, that's what we're going to do. Now, we're probably going to do some other things, too, but, uh, you know, I don't really plan my life out. I don't really plan my game out. I just do stuff. That's how I roll. We keep things real on this channel because, well, I, I don't like to script things. I think I like, I like to be natural. Let's go. There's that project that's been causing us nightmares and stole 40 hours of our life last episode. The giant hole. And we're going to waste probably another 40 or 50 hours of our life again in this one. Um, but not right away. I want to go do some fun things first because, yeah, this thing's going to crush my soul to do. The, the amount of work we're about to put in is absolutely ridiculous. But when we are done, this thing's going to be amazing. It's going to be a steampunk city with a whole custom deep dark at the bottom of it. And, oh, man, it's going to be awesome. And we're going to get a lot of it done this one. I don't know if we're going to finish it, but we are going to grind and grind and grind. But first... Let's go have some fun. If I sound a little off, it's because I am. Uh, I came down fairly ill, and uh, but you know what? I'm a trooper, and I'm just gonna roll with it. I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna grind. Now, what we're doing here is just a little build we're finishing up from uh, earlier chapters. This is our creeper farm uh, where we built our little hill slash mountain, whatever you want to call it. We never finished the bottom of it. And the reason I wanted to right now is so we can put these turtles here, and they don't get trapped underneath. Now, I'm not going to keep these turtles in this little cage forever. I just want to get some of the shoot or scoot or whatever it is called because I'm super big brain with English. And then I'm going to release them and they'll keep coming back to this beach. But we did take a second just to fancy up our little uh, island thing here. And you know we had to build something. Now, this is right atop our uh, collection for our creeper farm. So it's kind of dual purpose. It looks cool and, uh, well, we, we can feel a little fancier when we come and collect our gunpowder. I like it. One of our baby turtles just uh, completely disappeared. I do not know where he went. I don't think he would have suffocated anywhere. Eh, either way, we're going to breed a couple more and we're going to release these guys because we didn't really want them caged up anyways. And our good turtle friends laid us four more eggs. That gives us a total of uh, seven turtles we'll have uh, just kind of floating around and swimming and living out this way. I think that's plenty. Let me show you this little just a uh, little interior I did in here real quick. Just a little cozy, a little quaint. And we didn't fancy up the actual creeper collection system too much, but we got plenty of storage down here now, and here's some places to put shulkers to mix up uh, rockets or TNT, whatever we're trying to do. It's an improvement over the dirt hole. No, I'm not done playing with animals. We're going to go do more stuff. We were flying around just pondering what to do next, and we found this little dude, little Ocelot, and we had to bring him home. Uh, we need to get him a friend, too. Let's give this little guy a name so he sticks around. We're going to give Wallaby a fantastic place to live, but for right now, he's got to stay in this little pen. Mr. Wallaby needed himself a friend, so we spent a little time just flying around looking for one, and we did find one. And we eventually get him back home in the middle of the night. Weirdly enough, no mobs uh, crept up on us. It was, it was kind of weird. And we had to give him a name. Now, we went with the most uh, sophisticated name we could think of. Kiddie. Yep, yeah, yeah, very, very classy. We're, uh, we're like, we're, yeah. Our wild kitty friends need a cool place to live, and so do our camels over there. Because that barn was not built for them. I got other plans for that. 
Um, so I'm thinking uh, here soon, probably not in this chapter, I'm going to say definitely not in this chapter, we're going to do like a royal zoo somewhere. But where do we put it? I don't know. But I think that's what we're going to do, and I'm going to try to even get some dangerous mobs, like try to name a uh, Ravager and get them in there, maybe a Zoglin. Um, maybe even try to name tag, name tag some Creepers. I don't know. But that's the idea right now. We're going to play with it. You know, spaz brain. We'll see what happens. So we arrive back at our city, uh, and our current goal right now is just to get rid of all the tough block. Um, because I don't want to waste all the TNT that I just ground for uh, off camera. Well, you saw some of it in the desert uh, on the tough block because it insta mines. The deep slate does not, and it's annoying. Um, and I want to break up the monotony of all the deep slate that's in here. And a lot of the center section, I'm going to do a lot more tough than deep slate because it'll be deep slate, a lot more tough than deep slate. And then probably more deep slate or something even crazier down here. Not sure yet. And then that's going to, of course, go down to the uh, skulk. Well, let's get grinding. So we get on our grind as we do. Um, and this is going to be one heck of a time lapse. What uh, you'll see as a few minutes uh, took about 12 hours of actual work. And yeah, it fried my brain a little bit. But uh, the end result is pretty awesome. Um, and there's a few little surprises along the way. And here's that surprise I was telling you guys about. Um, this is a skeleton trap. Now, I intentionally don't fight these guys. Uh, I didn't want to risk killing the horses. So what I did instead is I let them kill themselves on my thorns. I had plenty of uh, golden carrots, and if I didn't get too cocky, I was fine. But the last one, we decided to risk it because it was taking forever. Negative 50, and oh my gosh, was this a lot of work. Like, so much work. 
Uh, by the way, it takes three rockets to get out of here. Three. Yeah, sometimes four if you don't get it quite right. But yeah, we, we got this part done, and now we got to build an entire freaking city. Yeah, that's actually going to be the fun part. And honestly, um, I watched a lot of movies, and uh, or listened to them at least. Uh, listened to a lot of music while I was doing this, so it wasn't that bad, but it took 12 hours. But we do have some plans of what we're going to do with this thing. Now, this here, I intentionally didn't dig it because, well, this is another slime chunk. I don't want slime spawning here. They need to spawn there. And if you notice during the time lapse, them slimes were a spawning. And it just keeps getting faster and faster and faster the more we do. So I'm going to fill this in with lava. It's going to be a lava lake. And then up there I saw some slime spawning too, but very, very rarely. I'll figure that out as we go. And then right there, I'm going to make a big, a big custom tavern. Um, I don't know exactly the details of it, but it's going to be a big focal point. And I stopped at Y50 for a reason. Because if we go down about five more blocks, well, then we hit our uh, strip mining area. I don't want to do that. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm still going to use that area, but I'd like access to it, and, uh, well, I, I, well, I was pretty much wore out by this point anyways. And this isn't all going to be flat. We are going to make some custom terrain for our uh, little uh, custom deep dark, and it's going to be pretty cool. Hold on, bud. Just hold on. There, now they're just an entourage. Come on, guys. Follow me. But yeah, we gotta build this thing, but I can't jump right back into it. I just can't. So I gotta go do something fun first. Oh, but one last thing. I thought that came out pretty cool. Um, now it's gonna like, look even cooler when we got a pathway going to it. But that's our skeleton farm that we uh, blocked off with the... Uh, what do you call it? The tinted glass. Yeah, uh, that's pretty awesome. Man, Wallaby is just spazzing in there. I think if I feed them fish, they will become, I don't know, like, docile? You can't tame them, I know that. You used to be able to. That's how you used to be able to get cats. It was weird, they changed it big time. Anyways, random adventure time. I'm going to go look for some uh, smithing templates and uh, other random adventure stuff. also want to find some birds, so let's go. Alright, now this one sh could have a template in it, but more importantly, we found more pandas. Is there a playful one? Because if there is, I gots to bring them home. Ooh, there's a sick one. I don't think I have a sick one. So we start checking temples, uh, and you know, if it doesn't have what we're looking for, we raid the uh, redstone and we uh, move on. Well, that one was a bust, but we got some free redstone stuff, and we're going to come back here for these pandas. Let's go look for some more. Okay, we got the wild. That was pretty quick. Might as well steal the redstone while we're here. I got that birdie. Now, where's that blue one I saw? Alright, we got two bird friends. Blue one would be pretty cool, but we got a white and a green. Well, I don't think we can do much more in the jungle here. Um, I think our next trend would have to be in an outpost. We found ourselves a trial ruin. But I kind of want to get these birds back home. Um, I'm going to take these trees out so it's easily visible. Okay, so I'm going to go and get these guys home. And then I'm going to come back and check out this little ruin. This is actually the first one I've ever found in any version of my games. Oh, 
Okay, we got ourselves four birdies. Ah, uh, they're pretty cute too. You can't make babies with them though. Yeah, kind of sucks. Oh well. I'm gonna leave him and them here for right now, and I'm gonna go uh, check out that trial run. Trial ruin? Trial run? Whatever it's called, you know. We get to working on this thing, and we are unaware of how big this thing actually is. But I'll tell you right now, we do end up getting one of the armor trims out of it, um, but we barely just even scratch the surface of this thing. Alright, so this has actually been pretty cool. Um, I've never done one of these before, and, uh, well, I didn't realize how big this was going to be. So, we're going to go adventure some more, and this is going to be for another episode. But I'm actually pretty excited to do it. We're going to excavate the entire thing, but not today. Okay, okay. Potential next uh, armor trim? Maybe. Forget what one can be in here, but there is one that can be in here. And nothing. Hello, Dread. Well, hello, blue friends. Hey, hold on, bro. Oh, you're going to go home with me. Uh, um, I, how'd that happen? Um, I just flew through the center of that. That was really weird. Oh well, we'll be back here. Alright, let's try this again. And nothing again. Alright, third time's a charm maybe? And while we're here, we need to get a bunch of this ice. For farm building, you'll see. Oh, seriously? Okay. <laughs> Look at all these dummies. Do I mob them? I had to get some of this ice, because I need it for a very specific farm involving some uh, spiky fishies. Alright, I don't know what the odds of this one is, but we're on our fifth one now. Oh my freaking... Ugh. Here we go again. These things are supposed to have a 25% chance to spawn. Uh, our luck is not great. And yeah, not great. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, finally. That was ridiculous. This is the 10th outpost. I traveled like 10,000 blocks in a circle. Oh, we got it. That's one, a two, and a three more added to the collection. And we also got like a thousand different horns. And now we're heading back to the nether. We need ourselves an eye uh, armor trim. Now, we fought the Ender Dragon on Chapter 3, and we did not raid the Stronghold at all. I don't even know if we opened up more than one chest, if that. So we're hoping that there's a, a trim there. So we start working through the, uh, the library here. Well, that one was easy. So if you're wondering why I'm getting some of these achievements again, it's because, and I mentioned it, in Chapter 5, when I was building the castle, uh, I had a power outage, and when I logged back into the world once my computer came back online, all my statistics were gone. Um, but my world was fine, my villagers were still cured from zombies, and nothing was deleted uh, besides the statistics. But the question is, is what happens when I jump in this portal? Is it going to register that I uh, fought the Ender Dragon? Uh, am I just going to be stuck there forever? I don't know. But it does show that all the uh, Eyes of Ender are already here. So I kind of want to jump in and see what it does. Now, luckily nothing seems like it really has changed. But I will say that um, there is something funny that does happen. This portal right here, it's not immediately lit. That doesn't seem right to me. I don't know why it was like that. I don't know. Everything is, seems to be okay, but man, I just hope this world doesn't get corrupted. Okay, well, the end's safe. I ain't gonna lie, I was kind of worried that, like, I was gonna get stuck in the end, or, like, the spawning platform was gonna be gone, or... Ugh, when Minecraft glitches, it glitches. But I think I'm finally convinced that this world is... It's not corrupted. Which is good, because I read that a lot of people, when it happens, their world just gets straight up deleted. So, yeah. Now, the next one we need is going to be in another fortress. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to quickly run through and see if I can't find one. Because the last time we were hunting for skulls, we didn't really go in the fortress. We were just kind of hunting on top of it. So I'm just going to, you know, blitz through it, see if I can't do something. No torches. Got a stack of frog lights, though. Now, unlike that stupid, stupid sentry trim from the pillager outpost, this one actually cooperates pretty good. I don't have to go through many chests to find what I'm looking for. Matter of fact, I think we only really have to check out three, maybe four, before we actually find it. Okay, okay. Nice. Yes, yes. So, the only uh, armor trims we don't have is the ones we need to get from the excavation site, which I am not doing that right now because I have already done enough digging. Um, and the other one is the silence, and I'm also not doing that one right now because that first ancient city, we got stupidly lucky, uh, lucky finding it pretty early. Uh, I only had to check, like, five caves, maybe. Um, but that thing has, like, a 1.2% chance to spawn. And with an average of 20-something chests per ancient city, I might have to go through three or four or even five of them. And that is just not happening right now. No, 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 no. 
I got pretty things to build. Let's go. Now our goal here is to make this look like a city, but also integrate as many farms and natural aspects as we can into the city. Like that uh, mine shaft right there that has a cave spider spawner literally right in the next room. Um, and you know, we want everything to look lived in. Like, uh, like this city is fully, fully functional. Um, now right now we have four farms and we're looking to add a few more. So uh, I'm gonna go and just do quickie quickie time build and I'll be right back with you. All right, so I'd like to welcome you all to the deep. Now, I thought about calling this place just simply the hole, but uh, I like the deep. It, it makes sense. Now, we still have some stuff to do, uh, but we made an enormous amount of progress. Um, there's still hours left, but man, um, let me show you some of the stuff we got done. We had a couple little decorative buildings that have nothing behind them, but there will be. And another farm uh, into our collection. This is our cactus farm. It's working pretty good. Couple more little decorative houses. Now this here, 
I originally was going to make it like a big uh, storage area, like a diagonal storage, but I have storage already in like three different places and I needed to branch off to the lower areas anyway. So that's what I went with. And I'll do some weird houses here or something. I don't know yet. This was going to be a tavern, but I ran out of room because of the sign. So this is going to be something else and the tavern's probably going to go below it. The, the, don't, don't pay attention to that's not done. But it's a path leading over to that section. Now up here we got our super smelter. Um, and it it actually came in clutch. This is how I got all my uh, cracked, uh, cracked deep slate brick the entire time. It was just rocking. Now this little house here, I really liked it. I don't know. It's so simple, but I just really like the feel of it. The way it kind of just ends right here. Same thing here. Like, it's not anything too special, but I just like it. And this, of course, goes down into uh, our spawner. Yeah, spawner's that way. I'll figure out how to make it look cool. And then over here, we just have a little viewing area of all the water that was surrounding this uh, this hole I dug. And these areas are for future planning. Uh, of course, we have um, our amethyst little mine over there. I'm going to figure out a way to automate that. And then there's gonna, probably going to be another farm here and maybe a big market right here. Uh, bring some villagers down. Be pretty cool. And then I don't know there. Now, I'm not going to do a ton of building into the deep slate. I want to corrupt most of that with skulk. But I'm probably going to go down to about right there. But down there is our spider spawner, I think, right there. So there's going to be a little building right there. I don't know how, I don't even think I'm actually going to build a yeah, pathway to it. I think it's gonna, I'm, I'm going to fly down to it. And uh, that's what we got done. But man, this uh, this build took 250 days. Um, and that most of it was building and digging. Uh, we went on a little bit of adventures, but it was mostly the building. And I hope somebody appreciates this. I hope somebody enjoyed it. Um, that's all I ever really want. I'll never be that dude like like and subscribe, blah blah blah. No, if you enjoyed it, cool. You want to subscribe, cool. But I just want people to have fun, and I hope somebody did. And uh, yeah, there's still more to do. So I will see you in the next one.